Okay, well, hello, everybody. Good afternoon. Welcome to another edition of the Cross and the Crescent Discussion Group. Today is a very special today. Today we are welcoming our friend Mohammed Abel. I'm going to butcher your last name. Mohammed, can you tell us how to pronounce your last name, please? So I don't butcher it for you. Mohammed Abdul Menam. Okay, thank you. Um, and we are going to have a discussion. We're going to have a discussion or a debate on the crucifixion of Christ. Uh, the debate format is that we, we've agreed upon where we'll each give a 15-minute introduction. I'll go first, followed by a 10-minute rebuttal. And then there's going to be a five-minute crossfire for, for each of us. And then we're going to have uh, five-minute closing statements. And what I would like to do, if possible, is wait until the Iowa basketball game's over, but that's not going to be possible. So I have to prioritize because everybody here didn't want to come here to listen to me complain about my Iowa Hawkeyes losing the championship today. But um, anyway, <laughs> the moderator today is going to be uh, Isa, and Isa is going to be the one that's going to be in charge telling us when we are done. Do we want like a one-minute warning, Muhammad? Do we want a one-minute warning? before our time's up, or you can just keep track of the time of yourself? No, I have a timer. Okay. All right. So you don't have to give us a warning, Issa, because that's, you know, I've, I've seen some debates where I can't watch this. I, I'm sorry. I got to turn this off because if I, if I sit here and watch this, I'll start screaming. Um, I've seen some debates where they, um, where they, uh, they'll, they'll say, okay, you got 30 seconds left and you just kind of lose track of, uh, your train of thought. We don't want that to happen. So what I'm going to do is uh, I will begin uh, with a 15-minute introduction. And of course, like everything else, I always have a slideshow that accompanies that. Uh, Issa, is there anything that you would like to say? Well, it's an honor to be your moderator today. And, um, you know, I hope we have a really interesting conversation that's fruitful. And, um, we can start the discussion whenever y'all want. And we're going to like, just to reinforce what uh, Eric said, we have 15 minute introductions, 10 minute rebuttals, five minute crossfire and five minute closings. Um, and then if we choose to, we can have a Q and a afterwards. Okay. Um, I think we agreed upon that having a Q and a, which, which is always kind of fun. <clears throat> um, all right. So uh, Isa, you let me know when, I need to begin. We are going to start now. Okay. Uh, let me get this. Did I get this set up here? I do have it set up correctly. Okay. Well, welcome to the debate, everybody. I appreciate Muhammad uh, engaging with me on this. The topic of today's debate is, um, was Jesus Christ uh, crucified? Um, when we look at this topic, I'm going to try to approach it mostly from a historical position. Uh, there is some theology that is involved in that. I get that. But I'm going to try to stay mainly uh, within the realm of using uh, historical facts um, because our religious beliefs have to be based on historical facts. And I wrote down a bunch of facts here um, about Christianity and uh, a bunch of facts about Islam. But then I also tried to differentiate those between uh what we consider our core beliefs as Christians and Muslims. And if you look in Christianity, you can see that, you know, we can, we can name all kinds of facts that uh, Jesus lived and taught in the region of Galilee in the, in the first century. He was a Torah observant uh, Jew. Uh, Christianity began with him. Or if we want to look at another historical fact, we can say that uh, crucifixion existed six centuries, up to six centuries prior to uh, Jesus' uh, uh, crucifixion. But then again, you look at the theological part of it, where we say that Jesus, you know, he, his, his resurrection is a statement of faith. Um, that is something we believe. We believe that uh, his death on a cross is an atonement for our sins. When we look at Islam, uh, we know that Islam began uh, in Arabia uh, in the early 7th century. Uh, we know that Muhammad, according to Islam, made a hijra from Mecca to Medina in 623, I think it was, um, and that there are five pillars in Islam. But there are some beliefs that are in uh, Islam that, uh, you know, you believe he was a prophet. 
That's a belief. That's not a fact. That is, that's just a belief. Um, and uh, mirage is a belief. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at how our faiths are supported by facts. And this fact alone of the crucifixion is what we're going to be mainly discussing today. Um, we get evidence from uh, both the Bible and extra biblical sources that the crucifixion of Christ occurred. Um, as a matter of fact, all scholarship says that Jesus did die on a cross. This is even your nominal Christians, your uh, atheists, agnostics, uh, Buddhists, uh, even Hindus admit that uh, Jesus died on the cross. But Islam denies that Jesus Christ died on a cross uh, because of uh, Quran verse 4, 157. Uh, what did I do here? I just lost my screen. There we go. Okay. Um, so when we look at some of the famous scholars, what they have to say about the crucifixion, of course, Bart Ehrman, one of the favorites of of Muslims uh, states that crucifixion by Jesus by the Romans is one of the most secure facts we have about his life. Even John Dominic Cross of the Jesus Seminar agrees with him. A uh, Jewish scholar, Paula Fredrickson, said that it's the strongest fact. Skeptic scholars from the Jesus Seminar is an indisputable, say it's indisputable fact. My uh, historical scholar, Marcus Borg, says that it's a fact. James T.D. Jung says that it is a historical fact. So all of your popular scholars on uh, uh, from his history and theology itself all say that Jesus died on a cross. And the death of Christ on a cross is the main tenet of Christianity. Uh, without the shedding of blood, according to the Bible, it goes clear back to the book of Genesis, and you go into Leviticus, Mosaic Law, and Exodus. Uh, even in Isaiah, it says that uh, there has to be shedding of blood for the forgiveness of sins, and that is affirmed in the book of of Hebrews. So as a Christian, we believe that in order for us to have salvation, we have to have our sins paid for, and that is payment was made by Christ. So it is definitely, or it is a Christian belief to believe that in order to uh, uh, to be saved, you have to uh, believe that Jesus died on the cross. And if we look at what the, the Quran says about this, it says, uh, and this is, I think there's three three errors in this verse alone, uh, because it says uh, the Jews called Jesus Messiah. No Jew calls Jesus Messiah. Um, so that's kind of suspect to begin with. But then it says that the Jews uh, thought that they killed him, and it wasn't. Uh, the, it was the Romans, and I, I get we can quibble on that because the Bible kind of alludes that the Jews uh, were responsible for it too. But then look what it says. It says they slew him not, nor crucified him. So they didn't slay Jesus, and they did not crucify him. But it only appeared to them. So somebody's up on a cross, and we'll get we'll get to that here in a little bit. So this is what... Um, uh, well, when we look at this, this is a historical statement. But the problem is, is that the veracity of historical statements have to be de demonstrated using a historical method. And historical method is where you go back to the earliest sources that you possibly can of an event to try to determine the veracity of it. And the historical uh, uh, sources that we have say that Jesus died on a cross. And what is so dangerous about this is if you look at what the, the, the book of Galatians tells us about following the gospel of anybody else, even if an angel, and notice what it says here, even if an angel, or even if we are an angel from heaven should preach to you a different gospel, death, deity, resurrection, let that person be damned, let that person be accursed. This, and he says it twice here, Paul says it twice here. This is how serious it is. But it's also satanic. Look what Jesus has to say about it when Peter was trying to say, hey, Lord, you're not going to go be crucified. I won't allow it. Look what Jesus tells Peter. Get behind me, Satan. You are not setting your mind on God's interest, but man's. And then you look at what the Quran teaches. There's a syllogism there somewhere. So let's look at the sources that we're going to look at. The Bible, we're going to look at early church fathers. And I'm going to tell you what, if you want a copy of this slideshow, because I'm going to blow through these sources really fast. If you want to copy this, just email me, ericbeckerfer at gmail.com, and I'll send it to you. Um, so when we look at the Bible, Matthew, the Gospel of Matthew says, from that time Jesus showed his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and be killed. Luke says they will mock him, insult him, and they will flog and kill him. Mark says they will kill him, and he has been killed. Mark says again they will mock and spit on him and kill him. This one, again, Mark, He was. this is where we say that Jesus fell on his face like a Muslim and pray to God. Abba, he did. But this is the Garden of Gethsemane where he's, he's doing the same thing. And then he says he's risen from 
the dead. Uh, let's see here. When therefore he's raised from the dead, let us die. He's, in order to be raised from the dead, you have to first be what? You first have to be dead. Uh, so you have the son of man three days and three nights in the heart of the earth, meaning that he's going to be buried for three days and three nights. Uh, he gave up his spirit. And this is what the, the gospels say. Matthew says he gave up his spirit, meaning he's dead. Mark says that he breathed his last. When you breathe your, la breathe your last, you're dead. Luke says that he also breathed his last, saying that he was dead. And then John, of course, says he gave up the spirit. All four of the gospels say that Jesus died. On, I don't have this up here, do I? I'm sorry. Say that Jesus died on a cross. I'm sorry. So what else does it teach? It says that uh, he was uh, crucified. Uh, he is risen. You have to, you know, this is from what, Luke? Uh, he was raised again. He's risen. Um, what else we got here? Corinthians, God raised the Lord. Christ was raised from the dead. Uh, resurrection of Jesus Christ. Uh, we believe Jesus died and rose again. Uh, okay, if you guys, anyway. Jesus died, was raised from the dead, resurrection. And this one I like right here from Corinthians. Corinthians, this one right here, it says it's within two years. This is a early church creed. This is a, for, within one year of the cross where the Christian church developed these creeds to teach about what happened. And in this, it starts in 1 Corinthians 15. It says that Jesus died for our sins. According to the scriptures, he rose again according to our, according to the scriptures. And you don't, I mean, that that is super uber early. If you're going to try to uh, say that he wasn't crucified, you're going to have to figure out a way to overcome that. I mean, that's that's almost immediately um, after the cross. Uh, First Peter, uh, Jesus rose from the dead. Acts, he rose from the dead. Uh, what's this one? Romans, he rose from the dead. Uh, Romans, again, he rose from the dead, rose from the dead, died, raised from the dead. As you can see a pattern here that he rose from the dead. The Bible clearly teaches that Jesus died on a cross and rose from the dead. This is not some nuanced uh, idea. Extra biblical sources. You have the Jewish Talmud said that on the eve of the Passover, Jesus, Yeshua was hanged uh, on a tree. And this term we can find in Galatians and Luke. So to say that this is something else is not true. Um, uh, Tacitus, he said that he suffered the, the most extreme penalty uh, from the Emperor Tiberius. Uh, then you have uh, Flavius Josephus. Flavius Josephus says that Pilate condemned him to be crucified. And the thing about this one, there are, the, if you go back to the earliest copies, the manuscripts of this, because there, there, there's some embellishments that people have said that have occurred, and okay, that's fine. But the earliest manuscripts say that he was crucified. Pilate condemned him to be crucified. So Josephus even admits it. Uh, Lucian of Samasta says that he was crucified. Uh, Marburn uh, Serpien from through uh, Julius Africanus says that they executed their wise king. Uh, Celsus crucified your God. Uh, Flagian during the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. Uh, Clement of Rome. Now we get to early church fathers in his uh, first epistle Corinthians. It's all over the place, saying that Jesus Christ was crucified. And even quotes Isaiah 53 in its entirety. Clement of Rome was a, a disciple of Peter and Paul, folks. This is a early secondhand source. Uh, then you get to Polycarp, who was a disciple of John, who says that he was crucified. All over the place. Ignatius, also a disciple of John, the Apostle John, says that he was uh, crucified. Um, Irenaeus, who was a Apostle of Polycarp talks about him being crucified. Then you get to Justin Martyr, crucified. Dialogue with Trifo, first apology all over the place. Um, Quadratus talks about him being crucified, being raised from the dead. And then if you go to even Gnostic sources, I mean, because I'm sure there's going to be some Gnostic sources cited here, some sort of justification of, as evidence for uh, Christ's crucifixion. Even if you go to Gnostic sources, the secret book of James says that he was crucified. The gospel of truth says he was crucified. The gospel of Philip uh, says he was crucified. Even the secret book of John uh, says that uh, he was crucified. And when we look at what the Quran says, the Quran, when it talks about the gospels, it talks about the gospels that was with him. It says, you're going to see, find me, Muhammad, in these gospels that is with you. Quran uh, 7, 156 and 7. Well, we know which Gospels were with 
Muslims in the seventh century. And the reason why is because the same exact gospels that existed at that time we have in our hands today. As a matter of fact, the Santiaticus predates Muhammad by 200 and so odd years. So we know what the gospel was at that time. And we're, you were told as Muslims to judge by what is in the gospel. I just showed you all kinds of verses from the gospels that clearly demonstrate that Jesus Christ was crucified. So the question is then, what happened if he wasn't crucified? And that's what I would be interested in hearing today. Was he somebody substituted um, as, you know, as discussed by your earliest compilers of Tafsir, even Abbas, Kathir, Al-Jalalain? They all say that somebody else was substituted for him. Or did he swoon on the cross? And, and did Jesus survive the cross by some uh, miracle? And if that is the case, then he would be the only one to survive a uh a crucifixion, a full crucifixion. There are only one, the other, there's two people that were taken off the cross that were friends of Josephus and one of them survived it, but that was only because he received the best medical care. So you, that, that's gonna have to be explained. And that's uh, supported by Ahmed Didat and also uh, Shabir Ali. So the conclusion uh, that I have for my opening statement is, is that Jesus predicted that he was gonna be crucified. The Quran denies the crucifixion. The Bible confirms the crucifixion all over the place. All of recorded history supports the crucifixion. And the Quran also is supposedly confirms what's in the Bible. But then, it, anyway, um, and all the other church fathers uh, confirm it. And there's no other logical demonstrated theological tenable reason. Okay, that's all I have. I can end it a minute early, I think. A little bit more. You had a minute and four seconds. Um, yeah, I wanted to also maybe talk a little bit before we get going on the origins of this idea. We can find out where find the origins of this idea that Jesus uh, did not die on the cross from the second great treatise of Seth. This is where it comes from. Um, again, as, as a non-Muslim, I don't believe that the Quran is the word of God. I believe that uh, Muhammad... Uh, fabricated, and this is one of the fabrications or plagiarisms that he had, uh, and he copied this from a known Gnostic source, the Second Great Treatise of Seth that we find from the Nag Hammadi uh, Library. And in this, if they're going to go with this, then you're, they're also going to have to believe that uh, Jesus and all of the previous apostles or previous prophets, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Moses, David, etc., worshipped a guy by the name of uh, Hebdomad. Um, so, you know, it's, it's, I don't know. Uh, I'll wait and see what, uh, Muhammad has to say about it. Thank you. Great. All right. Thank you for that. And now I'm going to start the timer again. Well, and, um, we will hand it off to Muhammad. Here we go. And first in the name of God, the most powerful and the most merciful. The doctrine of crucifixion is not in need in Judaism. As we read in the book of Ezekiel, chapter 18, verse 23, it says, Do I take any pleasure in the death of the weight, declares the servant Lord. Rather, I'm not pleased when they turn from their ways and live. And here we continue, But if a righteous person turns from their richness and commits sin and does the same detestable thing the weak person does, they will they live? None of the righteous things that person has done will be remembered. Because of the unfaithfulness, they are guilty. And because of the sins they have committed, they will die. Yet you say, the way of the Lord is not just. Here, you Israelites, is my way unjust? It's not your ways are unjust. If a righteous person turns from their righteousness and commits sin, they will die for it. Because of the sin... You okay, Mohammed? Yeah, I'm okay. But uh, I lose the beach, sorry. Okay, I'll continue. Yet you say the word of the Lord is not just here, Israelites, is my way unjust, is not your way that are unjust. If a righteous person turns from their righteousness and commits sin, they will die for it. Because of the sin they have committed, they will die. But if a weak person turns away from the wickedness they have committed and does what is just and right, they will save their life. So there is no need for crucifixion to forgive sins. Second thing, when we go to the evidences of the crucifixion, especially the historical evidences, as you quoted it from 
Joseph, Flavius Josephus and Tacitus, yes, there is historical uh, records that say there is a crucifixion happened, but it doesn't say is this person, is Jesus or not. It looks similar like Jesus, but we're not sure. So we will try to find who that person was. Second thing, we will go through the eyewitnesses who saw the crucifixion. When we read gospel, the eyewitnesses are Mary, mother of Jesus, according to Gospel of John, Mary Magdalene, according to Matthew, Mark, and John, Mary, the mother of James and Juicy, according to Matthew, Mark, Mary, the wife of Clophus, according to John, mother of Javadi's sons, according to Matthew, Salome, according to Luke, unnamed sister of Mary, the mother, according to John, the beloved disciple, according to John, the centron, and the Roman soldier and priests and scribes and Jewish people. This is, is common through all Gospels. The question is, we have only one disciple that was an eyewitness, and his Gospel was the last Gospel in order. And if we believe this prophecy of a sound will be fulfilled upon Jesus, that my friends and companions avoid me because of my wounds, my neighbors stay far away. This is Psalm 38. And we also see in Luke, we also see in Luke uh, 23, uh, 49, that his uh, neighbors were stay far from him. So no one was a, a direct eyewitness to the crucifixion. They didn't see it. And we have only one disciple that saw the crucifixion. And it's not sure because it was mentioned only in one gospel from four gospels. So how could we rely on narrations? with no evidences. No one of the disciples saw the crucifixion. No one. We have another example from uh, yeah, from Mark 15, 36. Someone ran, filled a sponge with one wine banger. This is an, another eyewitness from the Jewish people, someone ran, filled a sponge with the wine vinegar, put it on the staff and offered it to Jesus, say, drink. Now leave him alone. Let's see if Elijah comes. So they came down. He said, that was mentioned in Mark 15, 36. But when we read it in Matthew 27, verse 18, immediately one of them ran and got a sponge. He filled it with wine vinegar, put it on a staff and offered to Jesus, drink. The rest said, now leave him alone. Let's see if Elijah comes to save him or not. This is a contradiction. Who said the word, now leave him alone. Let's see Elijah comes and give him. Is the one running or the people told him. So we have a contradicted quote from eyewitnesses. Another thing, the shape of the crucifixion and instrument. Was it a tree or cross? When we read in Talmud, Sanhedrin 43.8, 43a, verse 8, or line 8. Rav Huna says, it's previous to me that the stone was which the condemned man is stone, and the tree on which he corrupts is hung. So it's a tree according to Talmud, Sanhedrin 43a, because in the line 20, it says that Jesus was hang, uh, was killed and hung. So we have here, it's a tree. Another thing we could find in the Calical Lectures, uh, of uh, Curl, uh, Jer uh, Bishop of uh, Jerusalem, Lecture 13, we see here uh, that Curl said, who by his spiritual hands had established the heaven and they were fastened with his nails that his manhood, which here the sins of men, having me nailed to the tree. So it's tree. And in another section of the same lecture, he said, in his truth should destroy all men, or that in his loving kindness he should cancel the sentences. But behold the wisdom of God, he preserves both the truth of his sentence and the exercise of his loving kindness. Christ took our sins in his body on the tree. This is the curl of Jerusalem lectures. So here it's tree. We also read an apocryphal work, Naga Hamadi. It's the letter of Peter to Philip, translated by Frederick Quist. We read that. And Peter opened his mouth, he said to his fellow disciples, Did our Lord Jesus, when he was in the body, show us everything? For he came down, my brother listened to my voice, and he was filled with the Holy Spirit. He spoke in thus, Our illumination, our illuminator Jesus came down and we and was crucified, and he bore a crown of thrones, and he put on a purple garment, and he was crucified on a tree. 
So here we got a three reference set, it's three, not a cross in the shape of tau or t. And we also read in the Tanakh, in Deuteronomy uh, 21, 23, cursed of God is everyone who hangs on a tree. So the punishment was hanging on a tree, not on a cross. From what is this dilemma came from? We will see it's dilemma in the Greek scriptures of the New Testament. We see it's different between two words, Elon and Strauss. One means tree, one means cross. This word was used in the New Testament to refer to that in which Jesus died. Peter used this word three times, the word island, which means tree, and he never used the word strauss. The only one who used the word strauss was Paul. And we, uh, when search on the Strong's dictionary, we know the difference between island and strauss. Peter used it. Uh, in his epistle, uh, Epistle of Peter, twice, and he used it in Book of Acts. Paul used it through his entire uh, uh, epistles of the New Testament. He never used the word uh, Elon, which means tree, except in two times. The first time when he uh, referred to Tower, uh, Deuteronomy uh, 21, that the Messiah or Jesus uh, was hanged due to the uh, law because he was cursed when he used to uh, when he referred to Deuteronomy 21 so he used that word and second time he used it uh, while he was preaching in his first years as an ambassador from the apostles then he replaced it with Strauss so he first in his beginning of his preaching time he used the word Elon but then he changed it with the word uh, Strauss which means a cross on the shape of tau or t all right, let's go to another thing. It's all uh, the historical references to what has happened. Ref the historical records refer to a person being crucified, not a ghost, as the Gnostics said. So here we have a person, but we're trying to find out who that person was. And here we continue. We uh, Muslims and Christians, we may disagree on that person, but later we will know. You say that, according to all uh, histor historians, that Jesus was crucified. Now we see a man look like Jesus and being crucified. We are not sure if he was cru Jesus or not, and we are depend on the uh, testify of the first eyewitness, which weren't one of them of his disciples. So we're going further to know. As we know, the faith of the Pasaladians, they said. It was someone else was crucified instead of Jesus. That one was Simon of Cyrene. That was crucified uh, instead of Jesus. For Jesus ex exchanged forms with him on the way and then standing unseen upside in Simon's form. Mark those who didn't, uh, who did the deed. Uh, he means the, this is uh, which contradicted by uh, the uh, another uh, narrations. So according to Pasaladians and other uh, uh, other uh, sects of believers, they sought another thing except the face of Paul or the face of uh, Christians from a Gentile uh, figure. Another thing we got through, through prophecies, uh, I think you would love to mention the prophecy of Isaiah 53, so I will uh, take on instead of you. Isaiah 53 in verse 4, it is said, Hold on a second. In verse four, it said, surely he took up our pain and poor our suffering, yet he was considered him punished by God and stricken by him and afflicted. The word afflicted here, it's not a right translation because when we see in the Hebrew script, it is said, the word here nego shows up in the commentary of Ibn Ezra, as we read now, he said, Stryken here means the one affected by plague. Plague, as we uh, read in Leviticus 13.5, 
On the seventh day, the priest shall conduct an examination, and if the affection has remained unchanged in color and disease has not spread on the skin, the priest shall isolate the person for another seven days. So the word here, nagal, referred to Leviticus 13.5, it means affected with lepros or plague. So the Messiah chosen here must be plagued, and that's also the belief of the mentioned in rabbinical tradition, we read in Sanhedrin 98b, verse 14, approach the Messiah, the Gemara asks what is his name, and the rabbis say the leper of house of Rabbi Yehuda Hanasi is his name, so he must be leprous. The Messiah, according to Jews, must be leprous, okay? Some of them believe that Isaiah 53 could refer to the Messiah, but we need a leprous Messiah, so it's not about Jesus. And there is a funny story that... Uh, uh, Rabbi Moshe ibn Maimun, Maimundus, uh, referred it in his uh, epistle to Yemen that there was a exodus of multitude of Jews numbering hundreds of thousands from the east beyond the Asfahan, led by an individual who pretended to be the Messiah. When the sages uh, met those guys, they asked them, uh, whereupon, uh, who, instig who uh, instigated you to make this uprising? Whereupon they replied, this man, one of the descendants of David, whom we know to be pious and victorious, this man, whom we know to be. Wait a second. And this man, uh, they know him with a sign. That sign was, he is a leaper at night, okay? And he arose the following morning healthy and sound. They believe that the leprosy was one of his characteristics of the Messiah. So a Messiah, according to the Jews, must be leprous, okay? The second prophecy that may Christian use is, for dogs have encompassed me, a company, uh, it's mentioned in Passons 22, for dogs have encompassed me, a company of evil doors have enclosed me like uh, the here is the difference like a line or they pierced my hands and my feet the word here pierced it's not uh, correct in um, hebrew they said it's karo not kari kari means lion karo means in uh, their point of view it means uh, they pierced him but it doesn't mean pierced it means they uh, dug him and it doesn't make sense. Digging is different than uh, piercing. So it's not, uh, it doesn't fit him. And the third prophecy made Christian use is uh, in Zechariah 12, 10. Now I will pour upon the house of David and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem, the spirit of grace and supplication. And they look unto me because they have thrust him through. Most of Christians uh, understood this prophecy as a reference to God being pierced, but it doesn't because in the Hebrew text it may, it says, Alright, that's it. Uh, I finished my uh, time. Okay, I'll complete. The I don't know if you if you have if you have you finish your sentence. Is that if correct? you need to if you need a couple more seconds, I don't mind. That's All right, cool. Because yeah. I know it's hard to get bumped up. In another prophecy, this prophecy was many of him. This was mentioned in. Um, I think that's it. Well, thank you, Mohammed. Uh, go to um, we're going to now shift into our. Um, I believe it's the rebuttals, right? Ten minute rebuttals. Is that cool? And yeah, yeah. You just tell me when to begin. All right, let me put my stopwatch on. Give me one sec. Mm -hmm. Bring up your 10. And we are starting now. Okay. Uh, right, there's several things, of course, that you, you're going to include from uh, somebody's opening statement in a debate, especially uh, in a uh, in a debate like this for an event that is so obvious to most of scholarship. And I did not hear one scholar cited by uh, Muhammad 
that denied the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. Um, the first thing he does is he went back to the prophet Ezekiel and used some nuanced verse as far as blood atonement is concerned and, and things of that nature. Um, and I would I would ask I would ask, you know, if you are going to try to uh, refute an event that happens uh, 700 years into the future from Ezekiel. Um, why are you going to a book that Muslims would consider to be corrupt to begin with? Uh, that doesn't make a lot of sense uh, to me. Um, then he uh, referred to Josephus and Tacitus not mentioning uh, Jesus uh, by name. That's simply not true. Uh, Tacitus says, uh, Nero fastened the guilt on a class hated for their abominations called Christians by the populace Christus, from whom the name had its origin, suffered the extreme. So Tacitus names Jesus by name, and then Flavius Josephus, um, about this time lived Jesus, and then it goes on, so he identifies Jesus in, in his writings. So both of the Roman historians uh, name Jesus by name. That, I don't, I'm not exactly sure where you, where you got that information uh, from. Um, then uh, he was uh, discussing eyewitnesses, and the eyewitnesses, as if none of the apostles saw uh, what occurred. And this, this is, um, to an extent, it is true, but at the same time, it affirms who wrote the Gospels as far as uh, John is concerned. John was a witness to the crucifixion. John was there with Jesus's mother. Uh, at the feet of Jesus, or very close to where at least where Jesus could communicate with them. And we find that in the Gospel of, of John. But also when you look at Peter and Matthew, who were both disciples, one of the things that really throws that out the window is the resurrection appearances of Jesus. Jesus showed himself to his disciples and said, look, this is what happened to me, pointing to his wrist. He, and in, in, uh, he even confronts Thomas about this. And then when we look at Luke, Luke, Luke was a, he's even uh, uh, secular scholars call him a first-rate historian. He interviewed the eyewitnesses and compile, was able to compile his gospel. This is how history is done. This is how the historical method is used. So they all knew that he was crucified. To say that nobody was an eyewitness is, is, is simply not, not true in, in a stretch. Also, they fled from him when he was arrested at Gethsemane. That doesn't mean that they didn't go to his crucifixion the next day. It's just not recorded in the Gospels. As a matter of fact, I would think that all of the, the disciples would be there at, at, at the crucifixion, even though they, they fled him the night before. Um, let's see here. He was... Uh, uh, okay, said that there was a contradiction uh, in Luke or Mark or something. Well, the, the con okay, so <laughs> it's not a contradiction. But even 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 with that said, the fact what is the fact? The fact is is that Jesus is on the cross. It is Jesus on the cross. So by citing Mark, what he's doing is he's affirming that it's Jesus. That's on the cross, so I really don't understand why um, uh, why, why he can, why he goes there. Um, then he uh, mentioned something about uh, a tree that uh, they said that he was uh, he was hung on a tree, and I mentioned in uh, as when when I showed the the quote from the Jewish Talmud that that when people are hung on a tree, this was a what we would call a simile as to uh, being crucified. And we find this same simile also in Galatians uh, 3.13 and in the Gospel of Luke 23.39 that he's hung on a tree. Both of them, Paul is meaning crucifixion and Luke is talking about crucifixion. So when we talk about somebody being hung on a tree, as we find in the Jewish Talmud, and I would also emphasize the fact that the Jewish Talmud is a hostile witness. And if anybody would try to deny the crucifixion of Jesus Christ, it would most, uh, most uh, certainly be the Jews. Um, okay, uh, Gnostic sources. He's um, citing Gnostic sources. Again, when we cite Gnostic sources, 
as some sort of support for your faith system, you know your faith system is in terrible shape. Everybody condemned the Gnostic sources in the second century. All, all mainline Christianity condemned Gnostic sources. This is, uh, this is widely spoke of by the early church fathers. And uh, so if you're going to try to cite a Gnostic source to some sort of affirmation of what happened, for example, you know, you could cite something like the Basilides. Well, that, they were known Gnostics. You could, um, with the Ebonites, known Gnostics. So you could cite all of these different sources, but they, are, they were condemned as heretics by, by, uh, um, by Christians at that time. And they knew that their, that their stories did not line up with what the gospel, the gospel message was. Um, historical records. Uh, he said something on the line that uh, we have a historical record that someone was made to look like him. I would like to see what that historical record is. If you're citing the Second Great Treatise of Seth, as I mentioned earlier in my uh, right at the close of uh, my opening statement, then again, this is a Gnostic source. And also the same Gnostic source that you would be citing has all kinds of belief systems in it that are antithetical to Islam itself. So it's, a, it's, it's, it's wanting your cake and eating it. To, it's kind of an American term. It's wanting, you know, I want to have these facts from this source that support my, my position, but all of these other facts from this source don't support my position. But uh, I, I, don't want, I don't want you to look at those. That's not, that's not going to happen. If you're going to cite uh, something like that, you have to um, uh, you have to uh, accept it all. And then Simon the Cyrene, we have no there, there's no guys. There is no indication that anybody else was on that cross to include Simon the Cyrene. It was, most certainly wasn't Judas Iscariot because Judas Iscariot was already dead by the time Jesus was crucified. But even the Simon the Cyrene, number one, this is saying that the Roman soldiers are incompetent. You could get yourself uh, execute it if you do not crucify the right person. So these guys are going to know. And to think that somebody else is going to be on that cross, he's going to say something. So I'm going to say, hey, guys, it's me. I'm sorry. I, I, Jesus is over there. He's going to say something. And then again, that also discounts the resurrection, uh, post-resurrection appearances of Jesus to his disciples. It does not line up at all. And also, I would also add in there that it was Jesus who, who, who did die on the cross because they sat there and watched him die on the cross and they drove a spear through his heart to ensure that he was dead. Because when you die on the cross, and I'm just, if the swoon theory comes up uh, a little bit later, I want to make sure I address this. If a person dies on the cross, you die of asphyxiation. You don't bleed out. You die of asphyxiation because your body cannot support, you cannot get a breath unless you push, pull yourself up to get a breath. And that's why you have to push off with your feet. This is why they break people, broke uh, the two, two people that were crucified with Jesus's legs. So they would hurry up and die. So they couldn't push up. Jesus was already dead because if you're hanging there for 10, 15, 20, 30 minutes or whatever the time period was, and you're not pushing yourself up, you're dead. Why? Because you're not breathing. If you're not breathing, you die. So again, there you have a, a problem with uh, swoon theory, replacement theory, because the replacement theory is not um, uh, sat, sat, not satisfied with the post-resurrection um, appearances. And the Romans did know how to uh, most definitely uh, crucify people. Um, Isaiah 53, I don't know, you can have your argument uh, with Isaiah 53. All of scholarship virtually says that Isaiah 53 is a, uh, is a, uh, a prophecy of the crucifixion. And as a matter of fact, one of the most concise type of prophecies that you could possibly imagine. This is why uh, I got, Lisa, uh, I got a lot of people that, or you had a lot of people try to deny that Isaiah 53 was, uh, was redacted, or they said it was redacted back into it. All right. All right, I think I got it. Go ahead. All right, so oops, copying that. <laughs> All right, we thank you very much for that rebuttal. And next, we will hand it off to Mohammed, and we're going to start now. First thing, Mark 
wasn't an eyewitness. Mark was a disciple of whom Mark was one of the 70s, not an eyewitness. This first thing. Second thing, you say that we cannot go through Jewish book because it's corrupted. They are corrupted books. But uh, let me clear things. When it's not uh, about to prove something, you, sh you say this is a corrupted book. Don't go through it. Okay. Corrupted book should have both facts and deviations. This is any corrupted books. There is no corrupted book have a same game, have one fact or have one deviation. The corrupted book should have both because any corrupted book must have uh, facts. Second thing, uh, you deny Talmud and you deny Gnostic writings, but you didn't refer to Krill, the Bishop of Jerusalem, with who mentioned the same thing. He was hanged on a tree. The historical sources about Tacitus and Josephus I never claim that they say it wasn't Jesus. Uh, I never said that. I said they said someone was crucified and they thought he was Jesus and they wrote this. I didn't deny on this. This is, was a uh, historical uh, record of them. Another thing, no one saw uh, Jesus being crucified. You say it's only John who's mentioned in his gospel, but John was the latest gospel was written in the end of the first century. So how can I rely on a witness and a testify that which is not the early sources that we have? It doesn't uh, back to Q or Luke or Matthew or Mark, the oldest one. No, it's an old test. It's a new testify to them. So we cannot compare them both. Uh, What we or what we have here, the doctrine of a Messiah being crucified uh, to forgive the sins of the world is not a doctrine of the of that Jesus came with. He came with a doctrine to obey the law, not to uh, uh, to to fulfill the law of Moses, not to uh, deny it or even to go against it. He came to fulfill the law. So the doc the doctrine here of a Messiah being crucified, it came from Paul. Paul only pleaded this. No one else. You say it is mentioned in the Gospels and in all New Testament that all the apostles believe the same and they baptize people in the name of a crucified Messiah. But it's not a clear evidence that they first stated to cross more than God. When we read in the uh, letter of James, we can see that fact. We can see only a belief to a crucified Messiah that can forgive all sins. We say obey the law. Because when you obey the law, according to Ezekiel 18, you live. And that's a thing and a fact. We all know it. We have another thing. Um, just one minute. Quran never mentioned that Gospels were plural. And when Quran referred to Gospels, they who followed the, the Prophet who was mentioned in both Torah and Gospels, it only referred to the prophecies of that prophet cannot be removed from the gospel or Torah, but other things could be removed. So the facts to the Jews of that time, the Christians of that time, is you know, the corrupted Bible even can contain prophecies about the promised prophet. One second, please.
when I mentioned the Gnostics, it wasn't a primary references. It was just like you used it to uh, speak about a historical fact that was in that time period. So we don't use the Gnostic writings as a base. We use it as a secondary uh, reference. He also said that Polycarp was a disciple of John, but Polycarp never mentioned uh, with John because uh, according to Papias, we have two John names. John the beloved the disciple and another John uh, uh, that he was John the uh, John the what did it say I can't uh, uh, remember his name but is mentioned in the Papias fragments. And another thing, uh, we could uh, back to the dilemma of uh, John was the only disciple that saw the crucifixion, but uh, even in the crit uh, text for criticism, we find that John never uh, wrote a book because he never uh, he wasn't uh, like you say uh, he never wrote Greek. John was just a fisherman from Judea, so he cannot try to. As you know, uh, textual uh, criticism. And scholars of the second and uh, third centuries, they heard what they were received from the earlier uh, fathers, and so on and so for the earlier uh, apostles and, and the disciples who listened from Christ. So it's just a words you could say moving from generation to generation but no one saw the fact and we don't have a clue that a uh, cross was actually existed as you know the story of queen helena uh, uh, mother of uh, constantine when she went to jerusalem and found the cross it's not a original story so there is no historical cross with the shape of t or tau I am uh, I forgot his name. His name was John the Elder. I forgot his name. And there was another one, and there was a third one. And we go to the Oxford Study Bible uh, Encyclopedia, we read that scholar generally agrees that the Gospels were written 40 to 60 years after the death of Jesus. So after the death of Jesus, a lot of disciples and eyewitnesses who, de who are you know, literally dead. So who wrote except those who was the students of disciples. So it wasn't the disciple themselves because when we read in the end of the book of John, the, and the beloved disciple who wrote this and who testified this, why he didn't call himself, I am John who wrote this and I am John who testified this and I'm John who saw Christ and I walked with him and I ate with him. The other facts you mentioned about Jesus being crucified and resurrected and he shown up to his uh, disciples when he when they saw him they saw he was uh, he was ghost or something like that but in fact jesus never appeared except to his disciples so how could i rely on a story mentioned only by you could say 12 of disciples and you could say many women who saw him how could i rely on this claim because neither jews saw him nor romans saw him so how can i trust uh, this uh, source, I cannot trust them. And the claim of the histori historical uh, records uh, couldn't be uh, reliable because G Joseph's writings, uh, we couldn't have uh, uh, an old man, a ma manuscript to him, dark to him, can find this. And Tacitus, uh, as you know, he lied about the fire of Rome, so he can't be a uh, good uh, reference or good. Mm -hmm.
Oh, do you want to finish your sentence and then we're going to move to the next section? Uh, did I uh, end my uh, time? Yeah, the time's over. Do you want to? You were in the middle of the sentence. Do you want to finish that and then we'll move to the next section? No, no, I'm good. Okay, cool. Um, we are now moving to the five minute crossfire, and then afterwards we're going to do our closing statements. So, um, kind of like a crossfire is like question and answer. So. We'll do that and we'll start the timer now. Okay, uh, first question, uh, Muhammad. Do you think the Bible is corrupt? Yes, it's Muhammad. corrupt. Yes, okay. yes, it's corrupt. Okay, so you're saying that you're going to go to a corrupted book to determine facts such as Muhammad is a prophet then. You're going to do that. Even in corrupted books, you could find mentions of the prophecies. You know okay. that. As John Chris, uh, Christum said that uh, in his homilies on John or Matthew, I don't, I don't remember, he said that many of the Jews corrupted and destroyed their books. Although okay. that's so, all right, that's great. Um, so when you, you, you go to a corrupted book to determine uh, whether or not a Muhammad is a prophet, how do you determine what is corrupted and how what is not? The main criteria that I rule with it is the Quran. What is uh, disagrees with the Quran, I refuse it. What agrees with the Quran, I accept it. Okay, so the Quran that is, and I'll I'll, I'll address that in my in my closing statement. All right, uh, next question: uh, How do you determine if an event is historical or not? For example, the crucifixion. How do you determine if that is a historical event? Crucifixion is historical. I don't deny this. No, no, the but... crucifixion of Jesus specifically. How do you determine whether or not it's a, that's a historical event? When I see a man uh, looks similar like Jesus, but in his form, but I see him denying all the works or all the miracles he done, and he said, "You, you say that you made that." Okay, so who exactly? Who exactly saw somebody other than Jesus on the cross? Who exactly was that? And what is the historical? What is your historical source for that? You just said that when you see a man that uh, is not Jesus on the cross. What did you say again? I'm sorry. Maybe I missed it. The man who was on the cross appeared to be same like Jesus, but it's not Jesus. Okay. What is your source for that? You know the Pastelidians and the other Gnostics, the Docetists. Right. right. Okay. Her okay. Known heretical sources. You're so you're trusting not known heretical sources over. Heretical sources, but they depend on prophecies that Jesus would be saved out right. of. Okay, so and again, you're going back to a prophecies that are from a corrupted book. Um, let's see here. Can you use a historical method? Can you even de de uh, demonstrate that Mecca existed in the seventh century using your criteria for a historical method? If you're going to use this uh, type of criterion to determine whether Christ Jesus Christ was crucified or not, can you can you can you do that? That's a multiple question. It's not like a single question. Uh, okay. Can you use the same methodology that you're using right now, known heretical sources, to determine if Mecca existed in the seventh century? Would would you accept that? We all know that apocrypha uh, writings couldn't be reliable in the religious matters, but it's reliable in the historical uh, uh, records. You know this. Okay. Can you list one peer-reviewed journal article from a reputable archaeological or theological journal that asserts that Jesus was not crucified? Just one. When all people saw this man like Jesus is crucified, but it's not Jesus. They don't all know he was Jesus or not, so we'll say it's Jesus. So my, my question and my, my answer will be uh, the they all thought he was Jesus, so they will all they would think that no, no one else was crucified. This is a point. Okay, but okay. So what, no, but okay. Maybe I'm not being clear enough here. What we're talking about, you, you can go to any theological journal, whether it's Christian, Hindu, Buddhist, or whatever, or any historical journal, whether it's secular or theological in nature or whatever. And then from those, using the peer reviewed process, can you cite one person? who has written a peer-reviewed paper, past peer review, peer review, and published a journaled article saying that Jesus was not crucified. Can you, can you provide one? Just one. 
The sects of Christian, early Christianity are more even than I could count them, Epionites uh, and uh, Nazarians and a lot of sects that I couldn't count them. So there was a lot of historians through them and they believe that Jesus was not crucified, but their writings didn't uh, survive to us. So it's not a so, of them. Okay, so number one, you can't. But number two, your, your response is, is that the writings that deny the crucifixion never survived. Am I correct on that? Yes, they are never survived, but we have prophecies. Okay, there, so. all right, that's that's good. All right, great. So now we will have. Oh, sorry about that. We're going to have the crossfire from um, Muhammad's uh, position. Okay, we are going to start now. Okay, first question: Jews claim that, according to Isaiah fifty-three, that Jesus is uh, that uh, the Messiah should be leprous Messiah, and I show you the references. So, Jesus was leprous or no? No, Jesus was not leprous. So, it can be the Messiah. That's first question. Uh, I'm not sure what you're referring to as far as saying that Jesus had your your source says that. G the Messiah has to be a leper. Is that what yes, you're saying? Messiah. Messiah okay. Well, I think I think you're. I think whatever your source is is full of crap. No, it's not a crap. It's a Jewish sources. It's from the Tanakh. It's, like, oh, it's, it's, it's a Jew. It's a rab It's a rabbinical commentary. It's not. It's not from scripture. Not from rabbinical. It's the same Tanakh, the Hebrew Bible. I didn't what, mention. The, okay. What? Bible. Which? Which verse are you talking about? Okay, I'm talking about Leviticus 13:5 in the Hebrew scripture that a man who's afflicted. Plague. This is the same word Naga in Hebrew. In the Isaiah 53 verse 4, it's mentioned that Nego. Nego means afflicted by lepers. Okay, and, uh, it says right here, surely took up her pain or boring or suffering. You considered him punished by God, stricken, afflicted. It doesn't say anything about, uh, it doesn't say anything here in the translation that I have or any other translation that I've seen before of him having to be a leper. Translation can be right. There wasn't no, the okay. Well, script. you're you're okay. And all these other people who have translated it as afflicted and not leper, they can be right too, can't they? No, I'm sorry. I'm not, right. I, I don't mean. I, I'm sorry. I don't mean to ask you questions. Go ahead. I'm sorry. That's not fair. Okay. Krill, the bishop of Jerusalem, mentioned uh, the uh, Jesus being crucified on a tree. And that's not a. Uh, rabbinical uh, reference or uh, apocryphal uh, writings. So, okay. what is the of uh, and, yeah. right? And and I mentioned that that's a simile, or can be used as a simile as somebody being hung on a tree as being crucified. It's mentioned in Galatians and also in the Gospel of Luke. So it doesn't uh, contradict the idea or the ideology of a. Uh, uh, cross on the shape of T or tau. Well, if you if, okay, well, a cross is made of wood, so you could say that he's he's being hung on a tree across. It, it, I mean, it's like I said, it's a simile, and it's mentioned. It, that type of language is used in Galatians and also in the Gospel of Luke. Do we have Do we have an early uh, artifact that shows, or uh, you could say, give a an evidence that the cross was in the shape of T or tau? Was in the shape of a what? Do we have an early evidence that the cross was in the shape of T or Tau? Early evidence or artifact? Well, our, our, well, all of the depictions that we have, as a matter of fact, the word cru crucifixion comes from the word cross. Other than that, I guess, no. But other than the root, root word itself, crucifixion, cross, comes from the same thing. The word is not Greek. Uh, we have the Greek words that mean ilo and stores. That's the Greek words. Right, and that's where crucifixion comes from, um, from the cross. I so all all the all the apostles and all the early writings mentioned that it was Alan. That How is the what mentioned it was Alan, which means tree. They didn't mention the thing about stores or cruci or a cross shape. Again, it's, it's a simile. It's, I don't know how else to answer your question. Because they use the same type of word in Galatians and in Luke. It's with when they mentions crucifixion being hung on a cross, they're saying that he's hung on a tree. And Luke is speaking of the same. Luke says that he was crucified. So if Luke says that he's hung on a tree or he's, hung, he's also hung on a cross, he's referring to the same thing. It is a simile. 
if you're not re relying on the eyewitnesses testify or the shape of the cross or the people who was to, uh, who were in uh, this uh, in this uh, you could say what you could say uh, in this uh, you could sorry for the truck if you don't have clear evidences of people being there in Judea or they saw the crucifixion or they know the shape of the cross or how many one of them or the cuts that uh, was saved from them. How could we rely on these sources and we don't have a clear evidence that it was about Jesus or not? How we could Because they were, the evidence was, was abundantly clear that he was hung on a cross in first century Jerusalem. Was that a question or that was just a statement? All right. Um, it's, that's good. Do you want to have that last question? Or are we good to move on? Well, if, if it, I, I didn't know if it was a statement or if it was a question, Muhammad, was that a statement or was that a question? I said this, the reference contradict each other. How could this be reliable? Okay. So it's a statement. Or no, um, how can it be reliable? I don't stay uh, question. Okay. It, 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 number one, it's, they're not, it's, it's not a contradiction. As I said, it's a, it's a simile. It's not a contradiction. If you say somebody is hung on a cross or somebody's hanging on a tree, a cross is made from a tree. It's alluding to the same thing. And we also have the same type of uh, allusion to it in the the Gospel of Luke. And um, I got to get this off the screen. I'm sorry. In the Gospel of Luke and uh, what did I say? Galatians. Sorry. Eight. Okay. So we're going to head to our closing statements um do we want to start in the inverse or do we want to do the same it's it's yeah. up to muhammad i'll go first or he can go first it's up to him what would you like stay the same hmm stay the same make it the same okay. the same so, okay yeah we'll, sure. we'll go I'll go first. The same. all right we're gonna start right now okay all right well thank you again muhammad for coming on uh to the show today this is uh i love doing debate i'm not the best debater in the world, but I, I really enjoy doing them and having these types of discussions, especially with Muslims uh, on our show, uh, The Cross and the Crescent. Um, let me uh, address a couple things here that um, uh, that I, I said during my opening statement and provided a plethora of sources for. Number one, uh, Jesus did predict his crucifixion. I provided all kinds of sources. Um, uh, for that. He also explains in the gospel how his crucifixion in his blood is a new covenant for Christianity. If he does not die on the cross, everything else in the New Testament does not make any sense. So of course you're going to say it's been corrupted uh, when it has, when you accept the crucifixion, then you can quickly understand how it is, how it is not um, corrupted. And when we look at the Bible, it clearly describes the death and crucifixion and resurrection of Jesus. There's no, there's no, that, that there's no ambiguity there. Uh, when you go to First Corinthians, First Corinthians, and you're talking about people who were eyewitnesses, he spoke about eyewitnesses. There was no eyewitnesses other than the disciples. No, 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 no. First Corinthians 15, uh, verses three through eight, it says that yes, the twelve did see. Uh, Jesus, but also 500 other people. This is an early creedal statement of the church. This is within a year or a year and a half of the cross. You do not get better attestation from this. As a matter of fact, Bart Ehrman, who is a big hero of uh, people who do Dawa, even says there's more attestation for the death of Jesus Christ than any other event from antiquity. We have over 15 separate sources that attest to his crucifixion. All historians that I've listed say that Jesus Christ died on a cross. So I have biblical evidence. I have extra biblical evidence. I have the early church fathers uh, testimony. And I even cited some Gnostic sources that, um, that Jesus died on a cross. The Quran itself gets crucifixion wrong. Not only does it get crucifixion wrong in uh, 4, 157 and 58, but it also gets crucifixion wrong um, as far as when it was used. It cites in uh, chapter 12, verse 41, in the court of Joseph in 1800 BC, it says that the Pharaoh was crucifying people. It also says in 7, 124, in 2649, that in the court of Pharaoh during the time of Moses, 
people were being crucified. Crucifixion was not invented until around the 6th century. This is the first recorded instances that we have of the crucifixion. So here, I mean, you, you can't get any more wrong uh, uh, than that. But also, the sad part about that is in the Quran, you have Allah, the God of the universe in 533, using the, the most cruel and inhumane way to exact pain and punishment out of somebody as a means to punish human beings, his creation. In 533, it talks about crucifying people. So this, this idea of crucifixion, Muhammad obviously got it wrong in 4157. But he also, it's anachronistic to say that it existed at the time uh, of Pharaoh, and then he uses it and embellishes it as a means for the God of the universe um, to, to, to practice this, this cruel form of punishment. Um, and I, I, let me um, just end with this. I, I cited that verse from Matthew where Peter tried to stop or tell Jesus that I would ne he would never allow him to go to the cross. The reason why it is described, uh-oh, it is described almost or in, in its entirety in the Bible that Jesus came was to be that atonement for us. And this is how much God loves us. He loves us so much that he sent his son to die in our stead. This atonement for sins, this blood atonement is necessary all throughout the Old Testament and now in the New Testament, this new covenant that Jesus Christ has provided through uh, for us through his blood shed on the cross for us, saves us from our sins. And he says that it's satanic to say that it's not the one thing that saves us from our sins, the Quran denies. Jesus Christ affirms in our Bible and all of history affirms the same thing. Thank you. Well, thank you so much for that closing, Eric. And now we're going to hand it off to the final closing with Muhammad. And remember, we have questions and answers afterwards. So if you want to put any questions in the chat, please let us know. All right, we're going to we're going to start off Muhammad right now. First thing, there is no need to crucify to forgive the sins of the world. This is doctrine was made by Paul, not by the, not by Torah, not by disciples. And when we say that Jesus predicted his um, uh, his crucifixion or his resurrection by himself, it's not a clear state because we don't have the original uh, orality uh, or original records of Jesus in Aramic because on the on, uh, mother language of Jesus was Aramic. We don't have the we don't have the original records, so we cannot judge what we have in Greek. So it is um, some kind of Christianity was made by Greek Gentiles, not by Jews who were raised with Jesus. And another thing I could say, crucifixion is a tough punishment, yes, but it is also in the. Uh, was mentioned in Tanakh for those, or, or the, I don't remember, it's Targum, not Tanakh. It was mentioned for those who disobeyed the commandments of God shall be uh, crucified on trees. So it, if this was cruel and tough, it was also in your books, but you don't find it there up till now. Uh, another thing. We can understand the books uh, if we could read it in its original languages. So we could understand Torah if we read it in Hebrew and understand Quran if we read it in Arabic. But we can't understand the Gospels of the, or the entire New Testament because it's not the original language of it. And also according to books of Moses that you need to fulfill the Torah for eternity, not to disobey the commandments of God. So disobeying Torah was idea made by Paul. So the Christians never uh, obey Torah or fulfill it. They never keep Sabbath by doing anything that Jesus ordered to be done. So this is um, outgoing of the lines of the <coughs> law that he
Maybe that's it. There is no more of it. So. All right, does that conclude your concluding statement then? Is it, is it, do you have any more or is that, you have still have two minutes left. So thank you for being here tonight with you, Eric, and for wishing for you all great night. All right, so that concludes our debate. Um, thank you so much, uh, panelists, for being, uh, Eric and Mohammed for being so cordial and engaging this, and this is a really great way to have debates. Um, so thank you. And we're going to move to like question answer and we can do like, and if we don't have much question answer, we can do like an open, open, like panel discussion here on the, on the form, on the format. Um, and they said, uh, Stephanie was saying that there's someone who would like to be let in Wasim. I don't know if that's possible, but, um, we did have one question. Um, I'm going to see how we can phrase this okay. the... we don't have any we're we're, we're at capacity right oh, now capacity. if somebody wants okay. to drop out if somebody wants to drop out to allow who wants to come in um his name is wasim ali wasim ali uh, i don't see that that's okay well it's open now we have eight so okay great thank you um so nicodemus asked muhammad a question um I'm see how he can phrase this in a politically correct way. Um, Nicodemus is asking Muhammad, do you believe what you were saying today? The, he used the words Dawa and uh, Takiyah. Um, or are you trying to be um, an exemplary Muslim? That's kind of, that's... It's, I, it sounds a little trolly, but it's up to Muhammad however he wants right. to answer that right. question. I didn't see the question. Please repeat it. Um, the question basically was asking you, do you believe what you said today, pretty much? Or are you trying to be an exemplary person? No, I believe. Uh, he's asking if you're trying to be political in your discussion. That's what he's asking. I answered the intro. Okay. You said not at all. Okay, cool. No, I was just clarifying that because he had put it more in the chat. Great. Hey, Issa, can I just can I just say something really quick? Sure. And it pains me to say this. The Hawkeyes lost today. Oh, I'm so sorry. I know that was. Hey, the Phillies <laughs> lost to in Philadelphia recently, so. <laughs> My Hawkeye girls lost. How disappointing. But, you know, they had a great season. Anyway, okay. Uh, um, go ahead. So I think we, if there's any, I don't see any more questions. He, oh, we got another question from Islam Unpacked. He said, Paul made up the crucifixion. How does he explain one, Peter one, one through five? Uh, thank you. Yeah, I want to address that too. Um, if you don't mind, could, could we put that up on the chat that Islam unpacked? Who who wrote it? Un Islam okay, yeah. unpacked. Yeah, it's I see it. Okay, I yeah. made up the crucifixion. How does he explain First Peter? Once you find it, yeah. Are you going to address that, Muhammad, or do you want me to go ahead? Uh, see uh, why don't you go first, and if Mohammed wants to chime in afterwards, right? Okay, so the the idea that Paul <clears throat> made up the the crucifixion is 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 ludicrous. It it, it really is. Uh, when we start talking about uh, the Acts of the Apostles, and we can clearly see, or when we let's just start with the, with with the Gospels themselves, okay. When we he said that you know the gospels were written you know really late um, and that's simply not true. All of the newest scholarship provides early uh, dates back in the fifties and even the late forties uh, for the gospels. I have had I've done a couple shows on the dating of the gospels, which uh, uh, puts the the gospel of Mark clear back in the forties ahead of Paul's epistles. To say that Paul 
change the gospel message. Uh, you you have to. I mean, it it borders on the 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 the, uh, the point of credulity. And the reason why I say that is because the Gospels all have Jesus talking about, I'm going to be crucified. I'm going to be crucified. I'm going to be crucified. And then the Gospels turn to Jesus being crucified, Jesus being crucified, Jesus being crucified. And then the Gospels turn to Jesus being resurrected from the dead after being crucified and people seeing him and interacting with him and Jesus showing him. So what it would do is it would make all of the gospel writers dishonest. Now, he mentioned something about Mark. Now, I might have said that I might have made a misstatement about Mark being an eyewitness. We know that Mark received his gospel from the apostle Peter, who was an eyewitness to all these things. So uh, to say that it was Paul is, you know, that this is a common, and you know, who else are you going to blame? I mean, you have to blame Paul because Paul wasn't there. So we got to say Paul corrupted everybody. And this is not true because if you go to, let me, let me, let me pull it up here. I'm going to go to second Peter chapter three, go to second Peter chapter three, second Peter chapter three. And let's see here, uh, verse, uh, bear in mind the Lord's patience, salvation, our dear, in verse 15, bear in mind that our Lord's patience means salvation, just as our dear brother Paul also wrote you with wisdom that God gave him. He writes the same way in all his letters, speaking in them, these matters, his letters contain some things that are hard to understand, which ignorant and unstable people distort. Um, as they do other scriptures to their own uh, destruction. So even Peter, the the main apostle, affirms uh, Paul's message, and Peter most certainly, according to traditions, uh, was responsible for the Gospel of Mark, and he writes about Christ's crucifixion in both of his epistles. Okay, cool. Do you have any responses, Muhammad? Um, I gotta go. I got another things to do. Okay. Well, God bless you, and, and I, Muhammad, again, thank you so much for coming. Um, I hope we were cordial enough for you because this is one of the stipulations that your friend uh, Stephanie warned me about. She said you better be nice to my friend, and she was not like that. But um, and I and I and I hope it was, and I, I appreciate your courtesy. Uh, also, we disagree, but I I do appreciate your courtesy. Yeah, I mean, thank you for for being uh, having good conversation tonight. All right, all right, so about this. Thanks. All right, uh, there was one more question, and then we could just have an open panel, and that's what we can do. Okay, our question is: Does Dominic Shields asks, does he have any historical sources to back up his claims that uh, the Prophet Islam had multiple attestations? So he's taken off, so we can't really answer that question. And, and during the during the debate, I did not hear any historical refer references. What I did hear was um, some references to uh, biblical passages, uh, references to... To, to Gnostic sources, um, again the the idea that Simon Cyrene was uh, was put in this place that comes from a Gnostic source and, and my, you know here's what's hard for me to to try to process is if you're going to believe a Quran a Quran that clearly contradicts the Bible. And so, therefore, your assumption is, is, well, the Bible must be corrupted, but yet your Quran does not say that the Bible was corrupted. And that, that's going to be my book, by the way. And I'm serious about that. Um, we have no evidence, no evidence that Simon the Cyrene was substituted on the cross for Jesus. We have no evidence that Jesus survived the cross. There is none. Nobody survives crucifixion. This is, I mean, if you if you do, then the soldier dies. So, uh, again, is this sorry? Is this the uh, questions part? 
Yeah, we're in the question and answers, but he, um, uh, the panelists. He's got to go. So uh, I, I, I don't really imagine this is just like a general chit chat because uh, yeah. obviously I. We're just I kind of chitter chat. We can well. we can just we can just chitter chat. Yeah. I mean, so, uh, it, there was one more question that Dragon asked, and um, you know, if Kyle, if you'd like to answer the question, that would be great. It's where um, is the question? Dragon, Dragon asks. Says, please ask him what about the Quran, uh, Surah Al Imran, Ayah fifty five, which is uh, the verse is about. Um, it says, when Allah said, "O oh Jesus, I will recall you and raise you to uh, raise you up to me, and will purify of those who disbelieve, and will set your followers above the unbelievers till the day of resurrection." Then to me you shall return, and I will judge between you regarding what what you differed. So, yes, that was the question. I didn't see a question, but um, basically, so you want the understanding of what the ayah yes. means because there is yes. no question. So um, he is raised to a station, not obviously caused by death, and the followers, which referred to there are not necessarily what uh, Christians understand as followers of Jesus, because in fact, you don't follow what Jesus was teaching. Jesus was teaching monotheism. Jesus never taught Trinitarianism. He never taught he was God. In his ministry, he never taught people he was God or that it needed to be accepted. So we'd only associate the followers of Jesus with a Jewish sect that follow what Jesus taught. Um, we also believe in the second coming of Jesus and that Jesus will correct his um, followers, some Christians who are honest in, in their approach to what Jesus was actually teaching. And the ones that died in between prophets that had a genuine understanding of Jesus's message, no, no ill fate would be suffered to them. So that's what the Quran means. Um, my thing would be that um, as we watched the debate, it sort of hinged a lot on Gish Gallup. And um, so people made claims that were, you didn't care about the veracity of the claims. So when we talk about historic well, well, accounts, so, so, what, what do you mean? Uh, I haven't answered the question. I haven't, I haven't answered the question else one yet. We talk about, um, we must mention contemporaries. What a contemporary is, is that somebody that lived beside this person inside their lifetime and was actually a witness so if we talk about contemporary historical accounts there are none if we talk about accounts that surfaced after it discredits the fact that they could be an actual eyewitness now if we look at the beginning of luke we will see that luke okay like, hold on just hold on, just hold, hold on a second just hold on just a second hold on just yeah. a second hold on just a second when you say there were no contemporaneous eyewitnesses, can you show me, can you show me one contemporaneous eyewitness that denies that Jesus was on the cross? No problem. I mean, let's let's so, let's turn let's turn it on its no problem. Turn it on its yeah, head. No you can problem. say there was and that, that's not true. No problem. John was there and the apostles were all there, and Jesus showed himself to the apostles after his resurrection. To say that there is no eyewitness is a desperate to me. It's a desperate claim used by people preying on the ignorance of Christians. We know no what problem. happened. We know what the gospel says. No, no. So I've understood. Show your me. Question. I want to. I want to know a witness. I want to know a witness. No problem. And I'll says answer that Jesus was not to your question. Go ahead. My claim was that when we talk about historic accounts, we should talk about contemporary historical witness accounts. Okay, right. ones that are historians, not anonymous gospels. For you then to question me. Okay, the gospels are not anonymous. Don't 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 try that shtick. Gospels are not are anonymous. An, are anonymous. Here's the reason why. Okay, I'm going to mute Christian you. Hold politics. on just a second. Okay, and we are talking gospels, about gospels. Hold on a second. Give me a second here. The gospels are the okay. Number one, Luke is not anonymous. That's number one. Number two, Matthew. Luke is not a contemporary. It, it doesn't. He got Luke he got his he, of Paul. Okay, you said the gospel. You said the gospel. You said the gospels were anonymous, and that's not no true. problem. And, and then the other what. three gospels. No, let me tell you what. And the other three gospels that were written were written with anonymity because biographies that were written in the first century were written 
anonymously. If one of these gospel writers would have said, I, John, I, Paul, I, Matthew, writing this gospel, then you would have this claim that, well, wait a second, this is a forgery because we know the gospels in the first century were all written with anonymity. It's a, you know, it's, it's a heads I win, tails you lose type scenario. So don't play, blame that the gospels were written anonymously, Stick, because everybody attests Matthew as the author of Matthew. Everybody attests Mark as the author of Mark, Luke, and John. Everybody says that there is consensus no in all the scholarship that says that. Go ahead. I agree with what you said, and I'll ask the question again. Were the gospels anonymous? Yes. No, well, Luke was. Thank you. But the other, That's it. The no, other no, no, we'll leave it at that. Yes. Now we'll go back to the Luke okay, issue. But, okay, said. but why are, why are you asking going, that? Why are you asking no, that? I, I, I want to know why you're asking that. Why are you asking we, that? We'll get there. We'll get no, there. No, but what I, I want to know why right now. Why are you asking I'll, that I'll right explain. now? I'll, I'll explain. I'll explain. And so Luke was a follower of Paul. And Paul Luke writes at the beginning of his gospel that he Luke decided. also interviewed the other uh, apostles and also talked to the other witnesses. Perfect. Okay. Perfect. So Luke then writes that he um, decided to collect orderly accounts, second and third hound, naturally. So Luke also wasn't a witness. He had collated stories which were around by witnesses. And that's okay. okay that's how you do history, though. That's how historical facts are determined. No problem. So when we talk about yeah. a historian that was a contemporary, we will have to say there is no historical contemporary reports of Jesus's crucifixion. No, there is. We have, no, no, we have, we have the gospel. We have the gospel telling us anonymous. Of what happened. Did, did you say anonymous earlier? They, okay, and I did, told you why they were written anonymously. Did you understand okay, so that? They were part? anonymous. No problem. But, okay, so they were tell anonymous. Me, tell, show me a biography hey, Eric, from can I ask a question? No, hold on just a second. I would like to know you. I would like you to cite a biography from the first century that's not written anonymously. Go ahead. <laughs> No, my point is that when you're you talking can't. about... No, no, the, the problem is you can't. And the reason no, 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 you no. can't the whole... is because what you're trying to do is you're trying to apply a, a, a simple type of genre and then saying, oh, well, we can't no, trust not. because they're written enough. Yes, you are. I'll it's explain why. It's obvious what you're I, trying to do. Should I tell you what this is? It's, this is a tactic called the Gish Gallop, where you attempt to confuse me on something and then wade in with lots of claims. If you're asking about uh, historical reports or writings that surfaced in the first century, I'm sure we can find them from many civilizations even before that were not anonymous. However, you're attempting to befuddle me on the spot. So again, all I'm saying is my claim is that there can be, is not any historical reports from contemporaries of the crucifixion. That is a fact. Clear fact. Is not a fact. No, it's not when, a fact. Luke, there you go. It's a clear fact. And it is. And then when we start to use what Christian scholarship use, when they start talking about Josephus, they will talk and let you know that there was a forged account from Josephus. Tacticus wasn't a contemporary. All right. And so then there was a, I think it was a Joseph what did you say about Ben something. What did you, what did you, what did you say Josephus about wasn't again? a contemporary of Jesus. He wasn't a contemporary and he wasn't an eyewitness. He was a historian. He was a historian. No problem. Uh, what what time okay. did he write? Do you, do you believe? Okay. Give us a date. Uh, around yeah, give us a date. 90, 90, 96 AD. Let me ask you this. Do you give believe, us a date of the crucifixion. Uh, do you believe, give us a okay, date do you believe that Suetonius provided? Years. Do you believe that Suetonius wrote an accurate biography of Caesar Tiberius? Or Nero, I'm sorry, Nero. Sorry. Dio Cassius. Um, again. Um, again, again, so, again, what um, I'm doing is I'm trying, to, I'm trying to get you to apply this equitably to other sources of literature, other, no, uh, other historians. No, no, other, yes, you are. No, no, you because you're not. Because these guys are 80 years removed. The earliest sources that we have on what Nero did are 80 years removed after his life. And these sources so, so are, so where they, again, are again, they are they are anonymous. But they and also I would I would also add that they're, you are going to believe anonymous. what they have to say. You are going to believe what they have to say about it. But they they weren't eyewitnesses either. But you're going to accept that history again. Oh, how do you do? How do you no. apply your historical method no consistently no. if you're going to arrive at other historical facts? No problem. And, and not accept so, what the so, gospel message says. No, no, no problem. So um, who did you say was writing about Tiberius? Dio Cassius. Suetonius. And you said that, and then later claimed that it was anonymous. No, I was talking I was talking about other biographies. Was, was it anonymous? 
was it anonymous? And anonymous? Yeah. I'm not exactly sure if they wrote anonymously. They were historians, then, so they don't have to write anonymously. Precisely. So when we talk about contemporary historic accounts, and you said that there were some that were anonymous and that was the mode, and now you're saying the Ocafius may not have been anonymous, it seems that there's a discrepancy historic, in what you no, say. No, they're, they're, can I, no, no, they're say, there seems a discrepancy in what you say from one minute to the next, if you can agree. No, I'm, now, no, no, no what I'm saying is, is that these historians that wrote, uh, these Can't historians, these historians, no problem. that wrote about the emperors were not I, I, contemporaneous with them. They were not contemporary. So that's, you are applying perfect. this standard to Josephus. Josephus wasn't contemporary. Tassus, no, I'm not. He wasn't. Yes, no, I'm not. I'm asking you to be honest on the subject. So if we now then take the Caffius's or accounts and say it is actually a matter of fact, because he heard about it 60 years ago, then that is what we call ignorance. No, he didn't hear if about it 60 years it, ago. He heard, it, he heard it from people who saw From witnesses from, for 60 right, years, from, covering from 60 years, and it was his yeah. research. So yeah. if we say that let's use due diligence and some other sources may appear, that may throw the doubt on this, but this is the earliest source we have on it, and uh, you know it's 60 years later, then that's fine. But if we talk and then say that actually contemporaries or we have historical accounts of it, and a historical account is this that was written 60 years later, we have to agree that through 60 years, some things change, get edited. And again, uh, another thing which you talk about is citing that, um, corrupted sources, there are many ways that the Bible has suffered corruption. And one clear example of a way that Bible suffered um, corruption would be that the Bible is an, uh, the New Testament specifically, is an Aramaic conversation. This is what the ministry of Jesus was, an Aramaic conversation recorded in Greek, then shared to you in English. All right, don't, that's, so that's, in that's, one no, sense, no, 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 okay, so, okay, listen. So in one sense, okay, strong man. Jesus, yeah, this is the strong man. Jesus speaks How? Arabic. I mean, the Arabic has Jesus speaking in the Quran. And you're going to no say, problem. well, it's lost in translation, whatever. No, no that doesn't work, no. sorry. Oh, he no, doesn't. No, 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 no. The Quran's when not written the in Quran Arabic then? Where, where was speaking, Muhammad when all this was going on? Not a problem, I'll explain. When, where um, was Quran, Muhammad when all this was going sorry, on? I'll you, sorry, I'll respond to you. Sorry, sorry, one second, I'll respond to you after. But when the Quran reveals anything to do with Jesus, it's not to do with a language, so to speak. The Quran is a revelation from the unseen. It is from God. God knows exactly. No, what I just, I just told no, it clearly not. that it's not from God because it talks about crucifixion at the time of no the problem. And we know no, crucifixion was not a better argument, dude. You just made. And, and I'll explain argument. that as well. It's I'll explain not from that God. as well. You know, to say um, the claim, you're making the claim it's from God, so we have to trust it. It's definitely not from God. No problem. So right. we'll, we'll deal with this. Hey, we'll deal with this. hey guys, so, guys, um, guys, guys, guys. Wait, wait. Let me just interject here. Let me just interject here, real quick, real quick. Um, maybe we should have like an order of responding to our guests here and treat them kindly. I'm just saying because we want them to come back. But I do have a question for Kyle. Well, well, can you find me any first century source, contemporary of Jesus, that backs up the chronic claim that he was not crucified and he did not die on the cross? Just one. That's how we need to yeah. settle this argument. So I think we have, okay, definitely not the dating of the first century. Um, uh, I think that two so or there you, four. So, so there you go. Your, your whole argument just now. Sorry, fails. can I finish? You have no, no eye, well, sorry, on, you have no sorry. eyewitness account. You Boom. asked for, you asked well, for an answer. Like you asked for an answer. So I think you should wait for an answer. I think and I believe that two or four, whether he was crucified or not, none of us will have a contemporary argument or a historian that will say it. And this is why the Quran says that you are only following conjecture. Rumors, hearsay. Again, that's where it's okay. wrong. But that's not true. Okay, and so why are you still a, and, Acts, and why Acts are you one, still a Muslim? Acts okay. one, no Acts no one no replaced problem. Judas, which was the the With twelve. No okay, no and they were all no eyewitnesses of his resurrection. No. That's Acts Perfect. one. Thank you. Acts. I'm a follower of Eyewitness. Sorry, exactly, Luke. Again. And Luke said he collected reports again. So if we even okay. add Matthias, that's how history is done. Do you understand? Do you even understand that? That's how history right. is done. Right. Absolutely you take eyewitnesses. You so take eyewitnesses. Who's the eyewitness to Al Fatiha? Who wrote Al Fatiha? 
Who's the eyewitnesses? The same criteria that you want to put on the Bible, let's put it on the Quran. Who was the eyewitnesses of, of uh, Al-Fatiha? Who wrote it? Again. Who, what, again. who wrote so it? We'll, no, we'll, you're we'll, not going to say again. Again, no, again, so what we'll do is we'll Who wrote it? Who wrote Al Fatiha? Who wrote it? Who wrote it? We're talking about. Who wrote Al Fatiha? See, if you bring your own criteria upon the Quran, it corrupts. So you can't use that same criteria on the Bible. No, because you There is no criteria I use except for I claimed that Luke, even the writer of Acts, which is Luke collected reports you then from eyewitnesses that's that's what no, you choose not to hear from eyewitnesses sir from eyewitnesses that's how history is done Sorry. and and an historian Sorry. will not get it from non eyewitnesses they will get it from eyewitnesses and that's what so luke says and that's what see see you want to close your eyes to the no, truth thank you Connie, Connie, let me, let me, let me, let me just, let me just. So, sorry, I hadn't okay. finished on the act part. And, and let's, um, one thing for you to consider. Um, if we say now that the 12th disciple was replaced by Matthias and um, he now had four, 12, 12 eyewitnesses to this, how many gospels do we have from Jesus' disciples? None. Out of the 12. It's still going to be four. Where you no. have sorry. Okay. we well, have John, right? Right, hold on. right, no, Eric. Hold on. We have John and hold on, hold on. Okay, three anonymous. And now, hold can on. you John. tell me what okay. percentage of 12 four is or three, shall we say? What percentage? Okay, you have Peter, you have the, the Peter's epistles. Am I correct? Do you understand what was written in Peter's epistles? Um, yes, Peter's epistles. We can say that's disputable because maybe one is Peter's epistle. Okay, the so second is oh, wow. Okay, wow. Wow. We can't trust so, yeah. okay, Let's so, all uh, throw it out. Uh, so let's all throw uh, out Al Fatiha, uh, too, right? Uh, let's all throw uh, out uh, Al Fatiha because uh, there's no uh, eyewitnesses. Uh, can we please uh, move on? Says, Hi, uh, Christian scholarship. Can you please let Wasim ask his question? Who? All right. What's the mic work? Hello? Eric, Hello. can you hear me? I can hear you, Wasim. Are uh, you a friend so... of Stephanie's? Yeah, yeah, correct. And you admit that on my show? You know this is recorded, yeah? I'm a friend of what? Stephanie. I'm just kidding. I'm, yeah, so, okay. So yeah. to get to my question, <laughs> do you claim that if you cite a source, you have to agree with everything that the author of that source says? Is that your criteria? Well, if you're using that criteria to assert a theological position, for an example, by using the second great treatise of Seth as a some sort of confirmation that Jesus Christ was not crucified, what you're doing is you're assuming that source is accurate against all other conventional wisdom, all other uh, texts. So if you're going to cite that, then you have to also look what's within that source itself. And within that source itself, it has all of the uh, prophets worshiping some other god. What about from so, a historical perspective? So if you cite a historical event and you cite a source, do you have to agree with everything that? That's no, I'm not. Say, I'm not saying. I'm not saying that at all. However, if you are making, if you are, if you the basis of your theological position is that Jesus Christ was not crucified, and you're going to turn around and you're going to use a source, for example, the Second Great Treatise of Seth, or the Basilides, or um, uh, the the Ebonites or whatever, you are going to also have to explain why you are only accepting that piece of what they're saying and rejecting everything else that they're saying. Right. Um, but so you use Tacitus as a well, primary evidence, let, correct? Let, let Wasim talk. I didn't hear you, Wasim. I'm sorry. So you use Tacitus as a source, correct, to prove the crucifixion? I use Tacitus as a his, historical source saying that Jesus Christ was crucified. Does Tacitus yeah. make any mistakes? Of course he does. Everybody's prone to make mistakes. But the question is, is why does everybody make the same mistake? And you can't get there. Go ahead. Because they're getting it from the New Testament. If you have a mistake. Because the New Testament is a reliable source. Hey, man. Come on, brother. I mean, if you take the Bible, for example, if you're going to take the Bible and if you don't accept that the Bible is uh, is inspired, if you don't accept the Bible is the word of God. However, if you consider it like all other works of ancient literature, you have to accept the history that is expound, that is discussed in the Bible. And when the Bible says that Jesus Christ did die on the cross, you're not you can't get past that as, as a historical reference.
now you can you know we can sit here and complain about uh what were you saying um anonymous not there we go yeah thank you thank you but somebody can correct my old age here um also, saying that they're uh, written uh, second or third hand. also second or third hand reports no they're not they're they're primary source uh, john was the primary source i mean no, luke, he, luke. Uh, luke who was a follower okay, but again Paul. again again Let's again his, the historical time. method the historical method is as you go back to the earliest source if luke is the earliest source well where did luke derive his information from he just derived it from the mother of jesus he just derived he did it not Sorry, that's, that's an assumption claim. isn't it that's what the false claim and it's okay. something that's been all right okay. He, he's, okay. luke he, did not right? specify sorry please let's do this honestly luke did not specify that he got anything from Mary, Mother of Jesus. This is uh, okay. doctrine. Right. Granted. This is doctrine granted, that we're granted. But when Luke says, so, so let me finish. If, if I'm, many if I'm of the truth, wrong account of things that have been fulfilled among us, just as they were handed down to us by those who, uh, from the first, were eyewitnesses and yeah. servants of, of the word. Thank you. That's Luke. Thank you. He gets it from the yes. eyewitnesses. Eyewitnesses That's right. would have He's included the mother That's what of we Jesus. told him 10 it's minutes it's ago it's from eyewitnesses, but he wants to close his eyes Sorry. to those words. Thank you. Sorry. Um, so like I said at the start, if we read the beginning of Luke and he writes it to the servants of God, he decided to collect an orderly account did not claim he was a witness. He did not name his witnesses. We are therefore talking about unnamed witnesses again. For you to name It doesn't one matter. Witness. Who's oh, the un... Uh, uh, what about al Fatiha? See, 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 the thing is, is he won't use sorry. the same criteria no on the problem. Quran. And no, that's his why. jeopardy. I'm, Thank you. No problem. I'm, I'm, and I'll explain why. And let me yeah, just answer this. I'll explain this one. Because you're dishonest. generally incoherent to what is being said and what the question being asked. Well, actually, is when we're saying eyewitnesses, sorry, you I'm, are generally sorry, being dishonest, sorry, sir. Me, you're wanting to sorry, throw those words at me, us, but we're me, telling me. you. But we're not no making problem. a claim of eyewitnesses. No problem. You're the one we did not make a claim. Document Thank you. Not historically be verified. So again, can I can I finish? Can, can I explain and let no, me let explain? Else, let, Kyle, let he me believes a, He believes in a document that cannot be historically verified. And so uh, if he's claiming that the Gospels were written late, then he has to reject the Quran because it was written way outside, over half a millennium outside the purview of the life and times of Jesus. The only way the Quran has any knowledge of Jesus is because of the New Testament. The New Testament are the earliest documents on the life and times of Jesus. And I can prove that to him just by asking him, how does he know according to the Quran when Jesus lived? Well, you no put problem. your claim on and him. Again, so um, uh, this is what we call a straw man. So the Quran never no, it's, claims it's not a, to it's be not a straw man. It is it's a straw, straw man, man and we let you finish. No, it's, it, it's, we, not, we a, you finish. it's not It's not a straw Sorry. man. Do not, do um, not I'll insult, I'll respond to what you do said. Not I'll respond to what you said. No, I'll, it is a straw man because I'll respond to the Quran. Say it explains everything the Quran in detail. explains that Doesn't it's a revelation from the Lord of the heavens. In and okay. Okay. So, so give it us something that Stop. One give second. Us something one that second. Let me finish. What the Quran says. Give me the respect that we gave you right. for your long sentence. Okay. So it claims to be the revelation from God. So it does not claim to be copying a source of Christianity. It does not claim to be reading from Gnostic anything. It says it is a revelation from the Lord Which of the world. It's a lie because the Quran copies no problem. from numerous... No problem. So where your straw man came about is that you actually said that the Quran copies from the Bible when the it Quran does. says it is a revelation it from God. The only way that so you that know about your position Zachariah is a straw man. and John the Baptist is because you got it from the book of Luke which you're no. taking a dump on right now. No. <laughs> not, not at all. Yeah, exactly. If it, if it wasn't God. for the Gospel of Luke, you would not have that story in the Quran. That, my friend, is a fact. Okay. Um, I had some other things that I wanted to address on here uh, that Muhammad had said um, as far as the dating, the dating of the Gospels. Um, again, the modern scholarship, the dating of the Gospels, pushes everything prior to the destruction of the temple, Jewish temple in uh, Jerusalem in 70 AD. And even the last Gospel, he admitted the last Gospel uh, was written by John. 
uh, predates that because we know by looking in the Gospel of John, chapter 5, verse 2, I think it is. Let me go over there. I'm sorry. I should have had this up. Uh, verse 2. Uh, let me put this up on the screen. There we go. Verse 2. Now there is in Jerusalem near the Sheep Gate, uh, which is called Bethesda, which is surrounded by five colored, uh, covered colonnades. Uh, that indicates that the, the these five colored, uh, covered colonnades still existed. That, those were completely destroyed uh, during the three-year siege of Jerusalem from 67 to 70 A.D., and in the destruction of uh, the Jewish temple, as described by Josephus. Um, so we know that John is prior to that, and John being the last gospel, we know that the book of Acts closes with Paul and Peter, uh, Paul being un under house arrest, Peter still being alive. We know they were martyred in Rome in 64, 65 AD. So that puts pushes the uh, book of Acts before that date. And then we look at the Gospel of Luke. We know that's written before the book of Acts because the book of Acts uh, talks about his, previ the, 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 his previous gospel written to Theopolis. And so that pushes that around 60. We know that Matthew, uh, the Gospel of Luke, draws on the uh, on Matthew and Mark heavily, which pushes them clear into uh, the, the early 50s because we got Paul in his epistles um, writing uh, uh, from uh, uh, citing directly from the Gospel of Luke as if it's sacred scripture. No problem. So I um, wanted I wanted to say that a lot all of these gospels were written very very early. And then lastly, let me put this one. I just want to do I just want to do this one last thing. I'm sorry, and I get to do this. But you will hang special. about. You, you will hang yeah, about yeah, for yeah, this. Yeah, sure, sure, so, sure, sure. I mean, I mean, do you get the last one? I'll explain one thing. Theodopolis just means servant of God. It wasn't actually a person. You should sure, use sure. the interlinear to read that. It just means to the servant of God or you people. Sure, okay. Sure. And also using this method to date a text would be like me saying in 2024, can you write about your hometown? If you wrote about your hometown that there was a shop there and it was the best shop and, and then claim that in fact, this writing that you wrote in 2024 was now written when you was eight years old. That is a flawed logic if we understand oh, so we cannot that's how, that's how the historical method is used that's how the historical method is used if you okay. write in 2024 about the town that you lived in when you were six years old does it mean we find that piece of paper five years down the line that that this paper was written did you, when you did you hear what the, did you hear what the verse says it says now not a problem. there is in jerusalem now when he's writing not a problem. It. so that means it not still exists now there is yes. in jerusalem okay okay I just want to but if part. i ask you to write about the town when you was eight years old and you wrote that now, now there was a festival and there was this shop called something okay does it mean that the date that you wrote this article which we've been asked in 2024 now assumes to be when you was eight years old if i said if i said now there is this festival that would mean yeah it still exists if i use the word now and that's the word john uses now there is in jerusalem Okay. So, I, mean, and, I don't know how you're what, what you're trying to do with this, but I'm just telling you, John said at that time that the Gospel of John was being written. He said at that time that he's writing that there were these colonnades that existed in Jerusalem. Yes. We know those colonnades exist. They, those colonnades did not exist after the Romans destroyed it in 70 AD. So yes, but I, 70, I, yeah, I don't, so 70 I don't know. Is what, fine. 70 is fine for, for the sources of these, and maybe the earliest right. manuscripts is the late part of the first century. Okay, but, but how do you explain the gospel? How do you explain the, the book of Acts ending with Paul still being in prison? Yet, if it, it's Pauline, letters, with, um, Pauline letters and Acts would be before actually the gospels. There's no problem with the no, dating. No, of it. no, 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 no. There's no problem I, with the I, dating. If you will, as a matter of fact, I tell you what, Kyle, Kyle, if you go to, uh, I we did a show on this. Now, if you go to my my YouTube channel, we did a show on this, and I I, I have it all mapped out for you. Um, yeah. uh, I don't know if you want to take the time to watch. You probably don't. And you do. It, it explains all of that. Now let me let me just bring this part up here. Now this right here, right here that we see right here, this is a early church creed, and I brought this up in the debate so people would understand um, what. 
and early church creed is. Early church creeds were developed because the populations at that time were largely illiterate. So in order to spread what the gospel message was, you had to be able to uh, uh, describe your faith in creedal statements. This statement right here is is affirmed by almost all, uh, almost unanimously by all of modern scholarship, not unanimously, but most modern scholars will date this creed to within five years of the cross. There are scholars today, even your most uh, credentialed scholars are dating it within a year. Now listen to what this creed, this creedal statement says. This creedal statement says, for what I received, this is Paul writing, that Christ died for our sins. According to the scriptures, he was buried and raised on the third day. According to the scriptures, he appeared to Peter, to the 12. And after that, more than 500 of the brothers who are still living. Some have fallen asleep. So here you have Paul reciting a writing what a early church creedal statement was and how we how they spread uh, the gospel. Who they, says it's early? People who uh, 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 study the Greek of this, I, I don't understand what you're saying. So I'm saying, why do they come to the, that conclusion that it's early? Um, do you, I don't know. I would that, have to. That, I'd have to look and see why they. Why they? I would. Um, the, I have Gary Habermas's book. Gary Habermas. The, lang the well, language. Ahead, the yeah. language. The language of the creedal statement is different from Paul's normal language. So it's not uh, Paul's normal primitive writing. So, so you have to admit that there's multiple uh, editors to the writing to come to that conclusion that it's early. Yes, it's early because Paul was a later convert to Christianity. Right. The text okay. has multiple editors. One Says minute. Who? Hold on. Shakespeare. Hang, 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 hang on. Hang on. Says who? That's what the scholars say. That the ones that what date scholar? it early. Name, name, name one of them. Gary Habermas for one. You can okay. Look, he says Gary, oh, oh, Gary Habermas did what again? He says that the text has multiple editors, and not only what, Habermas, what other, text does? Okay, uh, well, First Corinthians. I, I, okay, this is this is Gary Habermas's book, by the way. I say because so. it's not the normal Pauline style of writing, so it's not so it's like primitive. Yeah, it's 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 not. Hang, hang on, let me let me let me uh, let me address this guy. Thank you. So let's uh, let's get out of Her Gary Habermas. Let's let's get somebody who's a little bit more neutral, like a, a Jewish uh, Jewish scholars and rabbis. How how would you like to go on? Yeah, that's fun. Okay, so uh, I'm going to present to you, and this isn't going to help you out, uh, but we'll we'll do it anyway. <clears throat> this is Rabbi Kaufman Kohler in his book Jewish Theology, systematically and historically considered, page four eighty four. He states that the third gospel i.e. Luke, preserved the original Jewish doctrines of the church. Let me read that one more time. The third gospel, which is Luke, preserved the original Jewish doctrines of the church. Right? <clears throat> then, uh, Rabbi Dan Con Sherbach in his book, The Jewish Messiah, page 66, he says, all the writers of the Gospels agree that Jesus was raised on the third day after his crucifixion. Such a conviction was fundamental to the early Christians understanding of the significance of Jesus's life. Early Christian understanding, not later, early. Let me continue on. <clears throat> In the history of the church, the earliest, this is Rabbi Dan Con Sherbach. In the history of the early church, the earliest evidence for the resurrection event is found in the early sermons in the book of Acts. Notice how the rabbi veers from Christian scholarship, which says the earliest testimony is that of Paul in 1 Corinthians. He says it's in the book of Acts. Although... This material compiled at least 30 years, notice compiled, not written, 
compiled 30 years after Jesus' death is based on earlier sources. This is illustrated, once again, by the fact that the language used in these early speeches, which were by Peter, not Paul, is different from that used when the book was compiled in its final form. The Blackwell Dictionary of Judaica, Subwervo Jesus, states Jesus lived in the first century B.C. Through the first century C.E., he was a Palestinian religious leader, founder of Christianity. Notice, rabbis never say Paul founded Christianity like Muslims do. They say Jesus founded Christianity. He grew up in, in Galilee and was baptized by John the Baptist. He performed miracles and announced the coming of the kingdom of God. He was, he was arrested and crucified by order of, of the Roman procurator Pontius Pilate at the instigation of the Jewish authorities. His followers believed that he rose from the dead and ascended to heaven. They formed the core of the earliest Christian church, not a later Christian church. The death by crucifixion and resurrection and ascension was not later. It was the earliest testimony and actively spread the gospel news about Jesus, whom they believed to be the Messiah. Once again, the Blackwell Dictionary of Judaica. This is a Jewish source. Let me continue on. This is, and I'll, and I'll land here. I don't, I don't want to be long-winded. The Encyclopedia of the Jewish Religion. Subwervo, Jesus. Oh my gosh. Jesus, which is the Greek form of the Hebrew Yahashua, was the founder of Christianity. Died circa 30 CE. It appears that Jesus was a Galilean Jew and was influenced in his youth by the ascetic John the Baptist, who preached baptism and repentance in preparation for the imminent coming of the kingdom of God. Jesus' sayings exhibited many resemblances to the contemporary rabbinic teaching, and he essentially belonged to the Pharisaic rather than the Sadducean or sectarian tradition, both in observance of the law and in in his acceptance of specifically Pharisaic doctrines, for example, the resurrection of the dead. Ultimately, it was not so much his teaching as his conception of his messianic mission and destiny that was ultimately decisive. Jesus lived in the intense apocalyptic expectation of contemporary Jewish eschatology and apparently believed himself called to the messianic role of the Son of Man, Daniel chapter 7, verses 13 to 14. In the course of his short ministry, he seems to have come to the conclusion that his task also involved suffering and dying. After a messianic entry into Jerusalem just before the Passover, he was arrested as a potential revolutionary and executed, i.e. crucified, by order of the Roman procurator Pontius Pilate probably at the instigation of Jewish circles who feared Roman reaction to messianic agitation. For some time, his disciples and their followers, not just his disciples, but the disciples of the disciples, who believed that Jesus had risen from the dead and ascended into heaven, existed as a sect within the main body of Judaism. Robert H. Stein, Messianic Jewish scholar, in his book, Jesus the Messiah, A Survey of the Life of Christ, page 258, states that the death of Jesus of Nazareth on the cross is one of the best known and best attested events in all of history. Its denial is not based on evidence, but on apologetic motives. Let me read that again. The denial of Jesus' death by crucifixion is not based on evidence, but on apologetic motives. The fact remains, Jesus of Nazareth truly suffered under Pontius Pilate, died, and was buried. And finally, Gerhard Lof, uh, Lof, Lofink in his book, Jesus of Nazareth, 
what he wanted, who he was, page 296, states the oldest Easter creed in existence was that God had raised Jesus from the dead. Let me read that again. The oldest Easter creed was that God had raised Jesus from the dead. And I'll land right there. Those so that's the show. Okay, hold on. Rabbis. Hold on. My show. Okay, so what you're saying, Dale, okay, using the historical methodology, we can arrive at the fact that Jesus died on a cross in Jerusalem. That is correct. Using, and it's okay. And it's that's, and any, that's all I want to know. Denial, and any denial of that fact is not based on evidence. Okay. Right. But Shakespeare, do you know what you were supposed to respond to? He did. We we were respond we were responding to saying that uh, that uh, First Corinthians fifteen uh, is not the creed that the creedal statement that we find there is not early. I the reason, but, but I never the said reason, it wasn't early. Yeah, but What's the reason that? why the reason why I went the Jewish route is because you guys believe that everything Christians say is a lie. But none okay. of what you said refuted that the text has multiple editors. That's why they date it early. Uh, okay, <laughs> but none of the rabbis say that. None of the rabbis say it had multiple editors. What do you mean, right. none of the rabbis? The rabbis none consider Paul to be a heretic. Says who? That's what. Where, the, have you, uh, where, where, what have you studied in the last two hundred years of Pauline scholarship? That's what mainstream Judaism says about Paul, that he was a heretic. Okay, I'm not talking about mainstream Judaism. I'm talking so, but about... You're going, I, so you're going I'm, off singular, I, a singular source, but this, no, no, this doesn't not, refute but, but I, any of no, my points. No, all, It doesn't refute your, my original points. All, all I could just your, say that most I, I, mainstream I, Judaism says that Muhammad was a heretic too, so what's your point? Yeah, I mean, you're, you're, not, the, you're not being consistent. But he's the, I didn't appeal to the Jews. He appealed to the Jews. Yeah, and I does not Muhammad yeah, appeal? Because never mind. I'll stay I appeal to the Jews. I, I appeal to the Jews because uh inherent in your argumentation with us is that whatever Christians say is a lie anyway. But this second is what Christian all, scholars say. I'm not going to the sec, Jewish scholars. Sec, second second of all, second of all, brother, you can you you call Bart Ehrman a Christian scholar, and he's not a Christian. Right. Who's, okay. Well that's a so, straw, but so, I never said that. No, but but Bart you would call, but you you would call him a Christian scholar. You could call him a scholar of the Bible. He's not a Christian. If that's okay, what so Bart Ehrman right. says that we have 15 separate attestations to the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. Is he wrong? That doesn't mean anything to me. I didn't appeal to Bart well, Of course, it'd be out, 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 well, Bart Ehrman says irrelevant to you because you, we don't have any attestation to Jesus not being crucified. No, First century problem, attestation. Let me formulate my argument. Okay. <clears throat> the problem we have here is in this whole debate is the Quran. Is that <laughs> the Christian the, the Christians make the claim that we have eyewitness testimony for the crucifixion and that's why you should believe in it. When we ask you for eyewitness testimony and there is none, then no, you we, say no, 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 Well, no, no. the Quran doesn't do have not, eyewitness do not do not try to say that there yes, is there there because is. we have just hold on. We I cited it. The Gospel of John is very clear that John was there. We have the eyewitnesses of, hold on, let me finish. We have the disciples experiencing the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The Jesus Christ who's saying, look, look at my wrist. I was crucified. Look at my side. I was stuck with the spear. Look at my feet. I was crucified. To try to say that there weren't eyewitnesses, none of the disciples were eyewitnesses, is not true. Eric, can you, def can you defy what an eyewitness is? Somebody who saw wait, you. Let me, let, let, let me just chime in. Wait, let me just chime in. Eric, you bring up the Ishna chain. You you Muslims believe in the Ishna chain, right? Bring up the Ishna chain. Your graph, dude, that you had, that you promoted. Bring up the Ishna chain, dude. You all believe in the Ishna chain. We have yeah, unbroken so, so. chains. We have an unbroken chain of oh, the eyewitness of oh, the crucifixion. Okay, yes, about the, the eyewitness chain. Yes, the early church fathers bring that up. This is an unbroken chain. All right, let's go see. Let's test unbroken that, chain. Okay, okay right there you go. All right, let's yeah, test yeah. when you use their own criteria, you know, uh, when you use their own criteria with the Bible, they want to run away. No, because then it would yep. be weak. 
Because you yes. know, why, why is it that you guys make mm-hmm. arguments that your Quran never makes? Right. It does make the it makes the argument that you're believing in conjecture, which you just demonstrated. So yes, if you but, say, but, 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 so that's I'm lie, but, but that's a lie because tractate Sanhedrin, the rabbis do not accept conjecture. How is it an unbroken however, chain? The Talmud, the Talmud uh, testifies that Jesus was killed on the eve of Passover, and then Surah four, so that thou might eat a, I have five. But the Gospels I mean, don't, they disagree. Al Maida, I have 44, 44 says that Allah uh, entrusted the protection of the Torah to the rabbis. So he put some type of trust in them, and they testified that Jesus died on the eve of Passover, not to mention that the Quran copies uh, tractate Sanhedrin. <clears throat> That's uh, false. Because no, chap- the, no, Talmud, chapter four, the Talmud, verse five, the Mishnah. Copies it in with Surah the five, ayah thirty-two. So, so uh, it seems that the Talmud was a source of wahi. Allah sanctioned that as a source of wahi. The Jews testified that Jesus died on the eve of Passover, and that uh, the but rabbis Mark will will not accept Mark any doesn't. information. Will not accept any information based off of conjecture or hearsay. Yeah, but you've changed the subject from eyewitnesses to the Quran. No, because no, the prop, the problem well, is because is, because Quran, Eric, you're you're, not, you're you, being inconsistent. Pro- you're being inconsistent no. in your application of no, trying to tell us that we can't trust what the Bible says, but then you're going to say, well, we can trust what the Quran says, which contradicts what the Bible says, and then you try to use that to support what the Quran says. It makes no. absolutely no sense. But Eric, so you when said, we ask you to do the same thing, you fail. No, Eric, you said we have eyewitness testimony and you defined an eyewitness as someone who saw the event. Yes. So do you have someone who saw the event and wrote down what they saw? Yes. Who? John. So where does John claim to be an eyewitness? And Peter. Where does John first claim John, to be an eyewitness? Okay. First John chapter one, verses one through three. Woo. So who wrote first John? John. Oh, here who, we go. Here we go. Who, who wrote Who wrote Surat sure? Al Baqarah? Yes. <laughs> but your scholarship says all L- four listen, of the listen, Gospels let me, let me are explain anonymous. Some, let me explain the something. The letter. Of... You're You're not going to defeat me, okay? But does Bar Urban believe because, that John because wrote because I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna take your criterion, your non Quranic criterion, and I'm gonna throw it back in your face, and you're going to lose. But you've already been defeated. The The criterion that you're pelting against the Bible. If you help the Quran, the Quran will not survive. Stop making criteria up, pulling it out the crack of your body. So this is your claim. You claim by witnesses. No, no, no. Listen, by Surah, thir- Surah 37, Ayah 154 through 157, tells you to tell us, the unbelievers, to bring our scriptures if we have the truth. So when we bring our scripture, then you start questioning who wrote it or how many people edited it. You're engaging in argumentation that was not prescribed to you in your Quran. Now, the earliest Muslims believed that the uh, book that the Christians that Paul, had was corrupted. That Paul was a true no, they Muslim. don't. No, they don't. They do not believe that. They do believe to, that. You are going That's to have to cite that. That's, I'll you know, cite that, it. You're going to have to cite that. You're going to have to cite that. I'm sorry. You're going to have to cite who's, who's, who, who didn't believe what the Christians had in their hand. Go ahead. <laughs> My claim is, even though you've changed the topic, we could go to this. Oh, so you're God. saying oh, my gosh. the well, Muslims, the earliest Muslims believed that the Bible was corrupt. OK, here, OK, let's just let's just back up here. Sorry. All right. Because I, I, I really do got it. I'm so late for church. You're going to excommunicate me. Um, no, they're not. No, they're not. This I know, is I, no, okay. they're not. Um, please, okay. please. Let, let's go. Let's go back to the original claim. The original claim was, was Jesus crucified on the cross? And what we're trying to do here is trying to determine the veracity of the evidence that has been provided for the crucifixion. All we are doing now is asking you to apply that same criticism, that same critical uh, application of what uh, uh, what establishes a historical event and what does not to the chronic narrative. Yes, that's all, I, that's all I'm asking you to do. And all of we heard all, the only thing that I continue to hear, and I'm not, you know, I'm not faulting you for it because I, I would do, I would try to do it too. Is this continued criticism of what what the gospel message says? The continued criticism of the early sources, the early extra biblical sources that I have cited, but nowhere have you defended 
the Quranic position that Jesus was not criticized or crucified with some sort of evidence, that the same type of evidence that you're demanding from us. And I'm so, just asking you to provide provide something. So your original your claim was that you have eyewitness testimony, and that makes that a better okay. No, so, so, so we're no, no, no. You, I'm asking you a direct question, sir. I'm asking you a direct question. What evidence do you have that states, using the same criteria, eyewitness what's testimony the, or whatever, what's the that Jesus? What's what's the criteria? The criteria is is you're saying that you, you're saying that the Bible has has late has corrupted evidence of Jesus being crucified. You're saying that uh, we have. Uh, anonymous biographies, people who are not okay. What do you have that says that Jesus was? Yeah, that's not? your claim. You're the the first person. No, 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 no. If you are going, if claim. you are going, no, 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 no. If you are going to make a claim that says that Jesus was not crucified according to the Quran, and you are going to criticize people who provide using the 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 historical method, you're going to criticize us for using that methodology. I would like to see you use that that same methodology establishing your fact that Jesus was not crucified. I don't I have to, to I want the to, yes, the, well, Why do I have to? Why do you? Because well, it's because you live in a discuss. civilized society, I would hope. No, that no, you're, no. you're trying to participate in an intellectual discussion. Yeah, but you're, you're trying the, to provide. No, 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 no. You're the one that claims that Jesus was not, or your Quran, the one that claimed that Jesus was not crucified. That's correct. why we're having this debate to begin with. I want to know what type of criteria or what type of evidence do you have that supports that. That's what okay. I. If you're gonna, if you're gonna challenge the biblical narrative, okay, fine, that's fair. And we've okay. discussed that almost thoroughly. I want to know what type of evidence that you have that supports your narrative that Jesus Christ was not cri crucified using the same type criteria that you're demanding from us. What's the criteria that I'm demanding of you? You were saying that you have to have eyewitness testimony. No, no. I, I isn't, said that. isn't that what you said? I, no, I'm not. I'm no. getting you. Maybe I'm getting you and Kyle mixed up. I'm, I apologize yes. for that. I don't. I don't mean to do. Did Kyle leave? Yeah, he left. Okay, I, I'm yeah, sorry. Okay. I can't see him anyway, but I think so, yeah. Okay, sorry. So, Eric, do you know what the Quran specifically says about crucifixion? Um, yeah, I did. I, as a matter of fact, I cited it. It says that the Pharaoh practiced crucifixion. It says that Allah prescribed... So what does it say about the crucifixion about Jesus specifically? What does it say? <clears throat> it says that it appeared to them that Jesus Christ was... It says, Can I show... Read? Go ahead. Okay, Quran 5, 117. This is uh, Muhammad Asad. Nothing did I tell them beyond what uh, thou did bid me to say, worship God who is my sustainer as well as your sustainer. And I bore witness to what they did as long as I dwelt in their midst. For, but well, since thou hast caused me to die, thou hast caused me to die, Thou alone hast been their keeper, for thou art witness unto everything. This is Quran five one seventeen. I don't think that's what he was talking about, though. He was I talking don't... about four one fifty seven. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm bringing that. Four one seven. Yeah, let me bring okay. that up. Let me bring that up. Here it is, right here. But that's a okay. good one. That that one contradicts uh, four. It does, but we don't want to talk about contradictions. Okay, go ahead. All right. So is this is this what you're talking about? Yeah. Okay, so what what exactly are, are am I missing here? Well, what does the next verse say? Five one, uh, four one five eight. Uh, then I have to pull it up. Uh, no, as a matter of fact, I won't. I'll it says that use... Allah took him to Himself. Yeah. But he dies before he takes him to Himself. Yeah, but even in this verse four one five seven, it says it's making the claim that no one knows what happened to him except God. Correct. That they don't know what happened to Isa Ibn Maryam. We know what happened to Jesus of Nazareth because he taught throughout his ministry that he was going to die. There is no crucifixion. Okay. Yeah, but if, if, if only God knows what happened to him, then it would point, be pointless of you asking, no, that, that, was there a substitute? Your, that, that's what your Johnny Come Lately Quran says. The true Jesus of Nazareth, he died by crucifixion and rose again. He then why are you going to, if you don't ministry. believe it's the same person, then why are you going to the Quran? Because that's what you're using to try to impose this fictional character, Isa Ibn Miriam, who never existed, onto the true Jesus of Nazareth, which is in the Bible. That doesn't make any sense. 
it does. If you, if you if you don't believe it's the same person, then why are you asking for evidence from the Quran? Okay, because Isa ibn Maryam in the Quran died by uh uh he died well he died I don't know if he died by crucifixion but he it clearly is, died before what does it say? Allah took him up. Surah what does he say he died? Surah three, Ayah fifty five, Surah five, one seventeen and nineteen thirty three. Yeah, so yeah. On the day I will die, it's uh, in the future. It doesn't say he died anywhere yeah. in the text. Yeah, but, 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 but it it says he dies. It doesn't say anything Change about it. Allah taking him to himself. No, it says that he will die. And not to mention that the Quran also says that it explains all things in detail and does not qualify all things. Yeah, and how do you understand that verse? It doesn't matter. We're talking about the crucifixion. Where is the evidence for that you're using uh, to to justify four one fifty seven, where it says that Jesus was not crucified? Four one fifty seven simply states that the Christians are following conjecture. They don't know what happened, which is obvious because you don't know what happened. Where, where sure, we do. Asada? You don't. Where, where well, let, so let, let it, let it, it says it says, uh, and because of their saying, that, no, this is not the Christians. This is talking about the Jews. It's not talking about the Christians. It's talking about the Jews. It's talking it about we, everyone at the end. No, it yeah. says we talk. We are, we. Okay, number one. Number one. Let me just get this little tidbit out of the way. The Jews would never call Jesus the Messiah. So right. even right there, the Quran is wrong. So but the text Stephanie, doesn't say that. It it's it says we, we slew, slew yes, the Messiah. Does. Oh, but, Jesus, son of Mary. The but Jews who's didn't say that. But who's the calling Jews, him? Who's calling him the Messiah in that? passage the jews evidently well no that's your understanding oh, no okay. that's what it real, says what's the now you can i don't see no. that <laughs> this is crazy okay let's 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 hold on let's get this back up here okay no. okay they slew and then jesus son of mary but and here's this here's the second thing according to chapter three of the quran they don't even have the right Jesus because they call him Isa, and that's not that. That's not even the right Jesus. That's it. The, 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 the Jesus described in chapter three of the Quran is the son of Miriam. The son of Miriam is or Miriam is the sister of Aaron. Aaron is the sister of Moses. They don't even have the right Jesus. They don't have the right name. If you want no. to translate, hold on a second. If you're not if you're to translate this properly, use in the Arabic, it should be Yasu. It shouldn't be Isa. But let's just forget that little. That little detail here, but it goes on to say, it says they slew him not nor crucified him. So they didn't. So he, they're saying that the, the Jews did not crucify him. The Jews did not slay him. They slew him not, did not crucify him, but it only looked to them, only appeared to them. And they disagree. Nobody dis see. This is the problem. Nobody disagrees. You don't have any evidence. And this is what the point. I'm so you to do make. disagree. You have we do not disagree on the crucifixion okay. of Jesus. Oh, well, we don't. Day was the problem is the problem is, and this is why you're avoiding the question. You are avoiding the question because I'm asking you for direct evidence to support Which question? this claim. So it Which, says it so says, provide so me the, the same type of evidence. I'm going to ask it again for the eighth time. The same type of criteria that you're using for 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 a Christian saying that Jesus was crucified. Got to have eyewitness, got to have early, whatever, whatever. I want to I want to know what evidence do you have that says that Jesus was not crucified? The evidence is in the text, what it says that they disagree. Okay, so you're, what you're doing is you're using a text written down six centuries. You're not let me finish. Six you're not let me okay. finish. I'm, all right, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go yeah. ahead. Uh, the sixth so, century that, argument doesn't even work because... 94% of your manuscripts are after the 9th century. Whatever, whatever. Go ahead. Yeah, so that doesn't even work. But why is all why is all confirming? Let him go. Let him go. Let him go. Let him go. It's okay. When it says that they disagree, and they, either if you uh, say that's a statement to the Jews or the Christians, if you take all four gospels, do they disagree on the date, on how he died, what his last words were? They, they don't disagree that he was crucified. They don't disagree that he was crucified, and this is what it's talking Correct. about. Correct. Yeah. That's, so I don't yeah, care about the whatever details that you want to bring up. It's it's a non sequitur. But, but does it matter how he died? What his last words were? Since you're again, is, they all agree that he was crucified. Go on. But they disagree it about here, every, it. It says no. that he was not crucified here. No, they, Please they stick don't. To the they don't disagree. Stick, they don't right. Disagree as to what do they said. disagree? On, right. So what, no, no, so what, guys, do not fall for this. Make him answer the question. 
don't don't get into the detail. You can sit there and all, all these all are just accusations that are that are often repeated. Don't 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 allow it. Let him. Did he leave? He left. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was gonna ask uh, one question. There you have it. See, okay. all right. Um, I was gonna ask just that was uh, fun. One question. Amen, can yes. I'm gonna have to go find a new church now, but that was fun. <laughs> no, you won't, Eric. You know, they love you, uh, Darcy. Please, yeah, but this, this question is for Stephanie and all the other Muslims, Bebo in the YouTube chat. Why is there such a marked difference between Isa of the Quran, where he was born, and Jesus of the Bible, of where he where was is, born? Where does she say this? Uh, it's from Stephanie? No, not this the Quran, my, it doesn't say where out. Isa was born. They're trying um, to say Isa and Jesus are the same person, but why are there such different stories between or behind them? Born under a palm tree, or born right. in a stable in Bethlehem. Well, um, first of all, look at so his name. You can't have it both ways. Not only Jews, but no Shemitic culture, no near Middle Eastern culture, whatever named their their sons after their mother. Yeah. Well, this, so they got that there, wrong too. This just a polemic, is what it is. Yeah, okay, and, uh, Dragon is asking me to show something. What is this? What is this, Dragon? I don't know what this is. I can't cut and paste it. Oh, uh, Quran, wow. What is it? Can you guys, somebody bring that up for me? This, oh my gosh, sorry. Am I muted or what? Can you guys hear me? Yes, sir, we can. Okay, all right. So I get, uh, I'm trying to do five things here at one time. Um, yeah, Rad, that was a great idea to show them the, what the early church fathers give the train of transmission. You know, just, we were talking about the isnads and you know, have a verbal oral tradition. We have a written tradition dating I clear put, back to the to the eyewitnesses. So. I'll put the text in the in the chat. Okay. My goodness, you guys are busy. Uh, <laughs> it's I'm, been I'm a busy day. Yeah, I'm sitting there trying to keep up with everything. Um, okay, stop screen share. That's that one. Present. Okay, Quran Arabic translations. What is she saying? Do you recall what time Allah said, O Isa, verily I make thee die, and I'm lifting, uh, purifying thee from who disbelieves, shall place those who follow thee. In okay, what is this? This is where. And here's, you know, you guys, everybody keeps wanting to bring up, you know, the contradiction in the Quran, where, you know, 4157 says that Jesus was not crucified. And then you all want to circle back and say, well, that's a contradiction, because in the part of the Quran, it says that he did die. And I agree, I agree with that. But 99% of Muslims, maybe not that high, but high 90s, I would say, of Muslims believe that Jesus was not crucified. And I kind of like it that way. And the reason why I kind of like it that way is because it makes it show, it, it, it's a great example of how incorrect the Quran is and how wrong it is on this one simple historical, not a historical, a historical fact. And uh, when we start bringing all these other verses in, you know, citing that, you know, the, you know, God or Allah does say that Jesus was was died, they raised him up and all that stuff. That's great. But the majority of your Muslims were going to say that Jesus did not die on the cross. And that is goes right, it flies right in the face of all of scholarship. That's why I asked Muhammad, I mean the question I asked him, name, name me one, just one peer-reviewed article that affirms that Jesus was not crucified. And I've looked, I've and I'm not perfect, you know, there might be one out there. But I've never look, seen it, man. Look, the, the verse doesn't say that Jesus wasn't uh, crucified or killed. It's basically saying that they, whoever they is, didn't do it. Well, if they're talking about the Jews, then clearly the Romans did it. It's not really even denying that the, that the crucifixion took place. 
Well, it says they crucified him not, but it only appeared to them. So they're saying that somebody was crucified and it made it look like them. So if it wasn't Jesus, who was it? And that's right. my and that's that's my point. That but it but it's saying they crucified him not. Okay, but it appears it, to it them appeared, that, right. that he's being so, crucified. So we, so how do you get around that? Who's they? We know that from six A.D. that the Jews did not have the authority to to uh, to perform capital punishment. Right. right. So right. so if, so if it's talking so if it's saying if they is referring to the Jews that doesn't eliminate the Romans from doing it. Right. So it's 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 like I said it's a verse that falls in the category of Surah three verse seven that there are some verses that are foundational, you can understand them, and then there's those that are ambiguous. And believe me, Jewish scholarship is all over the place when it comes to Surah 4157. It's not clear at all. Okay. Uh, and I'm, also not to mention we have... Thank you, Eric, for staying. Thank you, sir. Out. We, we know you we, need to leave, sir. We have we have manuscripts that predate the Quran by centuries. And that last thing that uh, I can't even remember what his name was uh, that he threw out there about you know everything was added in nine centuries later. That's you know, a lie. I, 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 we know the Santi What is the date of the Santiaticus? Isn't that like the third? Santiaticus. Yes, what is that date? Is, uh, fourth century, isn't it, sir? That's fourth century. Yes, yes sir. Well, now, let me let me Google that uh, date of. But you have to remember when they start talking about codices, they're talking about compilations of New Testament texts. So they'll say your earliest New Testament. Well, when they mean by New Testament is the books of the New Testament. These letters and these gospels, they they circulated independently of each other. So pointing out that the oldest manuscript or codice that you have is, you know, Sinaitic. But this is this is complete. This is the complete one, though, correct? It, it, exactly. So that's what I'm saying. Before, you can't say that it was added in when we have this uh, from the fourth century. So, I, I mean, it, right. Again. They like to they like to say, well, the earliest New Testament you have is from the fourth century. Yeah. But those letters circulated independently before the compilation. Uh, and the other problem that they have is, and this is a fact, they do not have one complete Quran manuscript before 1924. Yep. Period. <laughs> uh -oh, let me mute up. All right. Um, we're going to go ahead and close it down for that. Yeah, everybody, I appreciate you all coming today. Uh, this was uh, a lot of fun, and I, you know, I don't. When when people come like like this, like Kyle and Waleen and uh, Muhammad, they all come. Uh, you know, it, it it gets heated, and you know that's I. You know, to me, that's what makes it uh, interesting, especially when you have people expressing their most deeply held convictions, um, and it, it does get raw. So again, everybody that came today, thank you so much for your contributions uh, uh, to not only the q a afterwards but also your cordiality with people um to try to refrain from uh you know being you know too this word, aggressive there's there's a good word um but at the same time we need to be aggressive with these guys because um uh, it, it flies right in the face of uh, what our lord and savior did for us and uh, that that the, the, the truth is what's important here all right everybody came god bless you and we will see you next week on the cross in the crescent rad can you shut me down on rumble